Hello and welcome back to my channel, Deku Fanfic. Join us as we delve into the realms of fanfiction and fantasy, bringing you the best stories and discussions. Today, we're kicking off the second part of our series, What If Deku Became Vessel for Discord. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more content in the future. The author of this story is DemonHeart12 from fanfiction.net. All the relevant links are in the description. Feel free to say hello to the author on their profile. Now, let's dive into the fanfic. Izuku's Fun Date Both Izuku and Pony were walking away from the school as they both got permission from their respective homeroom teachers a day before to go on their date. Off course, Izuku had to give Class 1B's resident lizard girl a small dinosaur egg that she wanted, and he told her that he made the being inside it tame. Pony looked at him and giggled, You know Izuku you shouldn't have given Setsuna that raptor. I'm sure he'll make a huge mess in 1B's dorms, and we'll have to join her in cleaning after it. Izuku chuckled as he said, Well, it seems that this is your problem, not mine. Izuku jumped as he screamed in pain. He looked and saw a horn on his back. He took the horn out and said, That hurts. Why did you do that? Pony just smiled as she said, I don't have the slightest idea what is talking about, Zuzu. She ran away from him to his house. He said that their date will begin from here. Once she arrived, she knocked on the door only for his mom to open it and say, Pony sweetie, it's a pleasure to see you. What are you doing here? I thought that you and Izuku were on a date. A girl nodded as she said, Izuku said that our date will begin from here. I don't know how though. Izuku then came barreling through the door as he smashed into Pony sending both toppling to the ground. He opened his eyes only to see her above him as she smiled and kissed him on the lips. His mother cleared her throat saying, As much as I love this show of affection, you're making me feel old. They both stood up with blushes on their faces as Izuku went to the door of his room and tapped on it three times. He looked at Pony and said, Would you like to do the honors? The girl curious walked over to the door and opened it seeing what was on the other side, and she was thrilled. On the other side of the door was an American street. The girl looked at her boyfriend as she jumped in happiness saying, Izuku, are you really taking me on a date to America? The boy nodded his head as he said, That's right my dear Pony. The girl jumped excitedly as she said, Can I go see my mommy? She said she wanted to talk with you if we ever visited the USA. The boy began to sweat bullets because to him Pony's mom cow lady was terrifying as hell. They usually talked to her with Pony on the phone, but he couldn't help but feel that the woman wanted to skin him alive for dating her daughter. The boy gulped as he gave her a shaky thumbs up. They then walked through the door connecting to the other side as Izuku's mom said in astonishment, doors that lead to other countries. Can't say I expected that, but what can I do? Well, it's time to go back to training I presume. The couple began to walk through the streets with Pony telling him every little thing about every corner in her country with Izuku mentally saying, she's really excited about our date. I'll give her that. The girl asked him as they walked through a park, where are we going Izuku? You still haven't told me what did you plan for today. The girl began to poke playfully him in the cheek while the boy chuckled as he detached his fingers and began to tickle in her stomach as he knew that she was ticklish. The girl doubled over as she laughed unable to control herself on the soft grass of the park. Izuku eventually stopped as he said, only a little bit more. I promise that you'll be going to love it. The girl smiled as she said, I always believe you, Izuku. She stood up as she grabbed his hand, and they walked together while she held his hand and leaned toward him. They walked for a bit more before reaching a place that Pony only read about in reviews. Izuku, is that Michael's Quirk Coffee Cafe? The only cafe in the world that allows quirk usage. She looked at her boyfriend who smiled at her as she began to jump in happiness as she said, but that place is expensive, how were you able to book a date there? The boy chuckled as he said, well, I booked it four months ago. I wanted our first date to be someplace you really like, so I might have paid a fortune for it. The girl grabbed his face kissing him as he mentally said, totally worth every penny. They both entered it and were escorted to their seat where Pony was looking around in awe as Izuku leaned in and said, if you keep looking at the place like that, people will think that you never entered a coffee shop in your life. Cool your jets a little. The girl blushed a little as she said, I can't help it. This place is like a dream that every girl from Texas wishes to go to on her date. I mean I still couldn't believe you booked a place for us. It's really astounding. The boy chuckled as he said, Well, you're here now so stop acting like that, or you'll never let me bring you to a high-class place like this ever again. The girl mock gasped as she then broke into a fit of giggles. The boy then saw a waiter stand up to them and say, Hello, my name is John, how can I be of service to you and the lovely lady tonight? Izuku smiled as he said, I want a strawberry milkshake with two small cakes and a croissant, while my girlfriend here wants a mango smoothie with a cup of coffee to the side add to that a small cake. He was poked in the side, I mean a big slice of cake with a strawberry and blueberry crepe on the side. The man bowed as he went to deliver the order as Izuku rubbed his assaulted spot. He looked at his girlfriend and said, you know you didn't have to hit me so hard. He then let a tear roll down his cheek. The girl rolled her eyes at his antics and said, come on Zuzu, you know that I wouldn't hurt you. She paused for a moment and then added, much this shocked the boy, but he can only respond to her by laughing a little as he knew deep down that she doesn't mean it, at least, he hoped that she didn't mean it. Izuku looked to his side as Discord appeared on his shoulder, look at this place, it's even fancier than its website makes it appear. 
He summoned a monocle on his eye as he added, You seriously pulled all the stunts for this didn't, Izuku? He bowed to Izuku as he said, You outdone me. I have to admit that you went all out beyond my expectations, but you're still missing something. His court smiled as Izuku rolled his eyes knowing what the ex-lord of chaos wanted. He told him that he wanted him on the first date to make magic spells to turn the tea and coffee into singing versions of themselves. No, I won't use my powers to turn tea, coffee, and sugar into singing versions of themselves. Discord summoned another version of himself and another followed by another as they all began to beg him. Izuku hated Discord's ability to use minor powers such as levitation, multiplication, and the ability to disconnect his body. Izuku was snapped from his thoughts when a waiter came up to him and asked, Can you please stop using your quirk? It's disturbing the guests. Izuku's brows furrowed as he said, I'm sure this place allows quirk usage. The waiter forced a smile as he replied, As long as it doesn't annoy the other customers. Izuku frowned as he added, But I can't help it. This part of my quirk. He pointed to Discord, dot 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 is sentient so I can't control it that much on what it does and doesn't. The waiter's fake smile depended as he said something that Izuku didn't hear much, but he frowned back when he said, All right, just keep it down. People are trying to enjoy themselves. Izuku nodded his head as the waiter went away. Izuku said, What an unpleasant person. Pony nudged him, Come on Zuzu, I'm sure he was just trying to do his job. You know how hard it is these days to find a paying job. She put a finger to her chin, I remember when I was 13 I worked at a supermarket. It was really frustrating how customers would come up to me crying and complaining about the smallest of details that weren't even my responsibility. Sometimes I really just wanted to bash their heads in. Izuku and Discord both sweat dropped as the former said, You didn't like that place, did you pony? The girl nodded her head in affirmation, as Izuku made a mental note not to get on her bad side ever. She asked him, What about you, Izuku? Did you ever work somewhere before you a? The boy shook his head as he remembered his quirkless days, or rather his powerless days since he is technically still quirkless, but with chaos powers to level the playing field this time around. Not a lot of people hire quirkless people to work, and if they do, they usually will fault them for anything and kick them out at the first chance they had. He looked at Pony's eyes who started to fill with tears as he said, but that doesn't mean I'm sad or bothered by that. The horse girl smiled slightly but still felt bad. She used to hear about quirkless people and their trouble outside of America, but she always thought that they were being exaggerated given that her country gave quirkless people the same rights as quirk, and it was a serious crime to discriminate against them so naturally, she thought that it is the same in other countries. But sadly the reality is a bitch that loves to smash her expectations into a million tiny pieces because the day she arrived in Japan, she saw the truth. She saw a bald old man getting kicked by a store owner who yelled at him to never come back because he was quirkless. When she asked if he was okay, he shrugged saying that he got used to it at this point, and for her not to bother herself with him since she's a foreigner. And they'd pick her. I'm sorry, Izuku, but I just hate that you used to be treated badly for something you can't even control. The boy smiled at her words as he said, well now don't feel bad. I mean it's a thing in the past now, and we're here to enjoy our date not to cry, so let's do that. She detached his finger as they went and began to tickle her in her stomach causing her to laugh uncontrollably for the second time this evening. When he stopped, he noticed some patrons frowning at them, but he shrugged as he looked at Pony who said, You know Setsuna gonna be really mad that you can do her thing. Izuku nodded his head understanding where Pony was coming from after all. It's not every day that someone manages to become the Lord of Chaos's apprentice or in Izuku's case forced apprentice since he didn't have a say in this. Discord rolled his eyes from the side, I tried to possess your body big deal. Get over it already. I mean I'm already over it. This caused a tick mark to appear on Izuku's forehead as he said, That's because you weren't the one being possessed, I was. The two began to argue back and forth with Pony laughing at them before she decided to intervene. Um, I'm wondering if you two share the same body, does that mean you two share thoughts? Both of them nodded with Pony gaining a smirk, So Discord, does Zuzu ever have perverted ideas about me? The ex-lord of chaos ever so happy to cause chaos smiled as he opened his mouth to reply before Izuku slammed both his hands on him causing him to puff out of existence as his face held a very heavy blush making Pony laugh at him as she said. That's all I need to know. This made green-haired boy's head heat up like a lobster thrown in boiled water so he tried to defend himself, but the universe had another thing to disturb him. Their waiter came holding their food as he set it down on the table and said with a smile that seemed a little too fake for Izuku, enjoy the green-haired boy took his croissants and examined them before he bit down on them enjoying the taste. Pony did the same as she took a bite out of her cake and smiled saying, this is really tasty. I wish I could eat from it forever, it feels like it jumped into my mouth. Izuku laughed as he said, you know I can make it move into your mouth with my chaos magic, but it would make so much attention. The girl smiled, you can, can't you? Discord said that he wanted to make it sing and dance for me. The boy took the request for a moment and wondered if he should actually do it, but he wanted to make this date memorable for her so he said in his head, what the heck, let's do it. He can distinctly hear Discord yell in happiness. Seriously, the guy had a serious love for all things chaotic not that Izuku can blame him, it was his thing after all. So with a flick of his finger, the cake stood up with the crepe pieces and began to dance around along with the coffee pony had. 
the horse girl could only watch in amusement, were the tasty foods that will make you smile, and put that frown away, the cake sang as it entered her mouth making her smile. It was all happiness till a waiter came in their direction, and said with anger in his voice, are going to seize your actions, or are going to kick you out of here. This caused Izuku to frown as he said, what's your problem? We're not disturbing anyone. Everyone seems to be having their own food, and we're barely making a noise. The waiter seemed to get angrier by the minute as he replied, You and this girl of yours were an annoyance the moment you came into this store, so I want you to leave. This made Izuku get angry as he was about to go and punch him in the face, but Pony stopped him. He looked at her as she shook her head signaling to him that it was not worth it, and that should leave any way to go and meet her mother. This boy shivered as he thought about that. He grabbed Pony's hand as he walked outside the cafe while having their stuff put inside a box. He looked at the cashier as he paid them money, we're not going to give you a good review. The cashier could only smile awkwardly as this was the third time this week one of the new waiters kicked a customer for not living out of their ideals. Izuku and Pony then walked out, but Izuku then allowed the back of his shirt to snap itself. The effect was immediate, but it will be noticed later on. Pony looked at her boyfriend and said, I'm sorry Zuzu. If I didn't tell you to make the food sing, they wouldn't have kicked us out. Izuku then kissed her saying, never say that again. They wanted to kick us out from the beginning, but they used this as an excuse so they can come up on the moral high ground. The horse girl smiled as she told her boyfriend, come on Zuzu, let's go see my mom. Izuku smiled worriedly as he tried not to feel afraid of Pony's mom, but inside the cafe one of the workers there stood beside the wall, and he heard some ruckus from inside it. He put his ear to the wall to check if they had some infestation of some kind, but he didn't find anything so he shrugged. Little did he know that inside the wall was a huge swarm of frogs was inside the walls, and in the next few days, they will attack the cafe. Izuku and Pony contained to walk together till they reached a small farm where Pony used to live here. Izuku looked at her and said, you used to live here. The girl nodded, but Izuku said, Hem, I thought one of the most famous pro heroes in America will have a fancier house, but to each their own. Pony giggled, Mom likes to live a modest. She also likes the farm life because my grandpa taught her that a person who really wants to be a hero should live a modest life so he can understand the pains of regular citizens. Izuku blinked as he found this to be very moving, then Pony added, But Mommy also hates to do taxes for big homes and buy groceries, so yeah we live on a farm. Izuku sweat dropped as he said, so she's basically cheap. Pony looked at him, very much. At least she does charity. Izuku nodded as Discord said, so she's cheap on her family. Izuku asked her, Pony, how come you never told me about your dad? The girl blinked, before a sheepish expression appeared on her face, well, dad is really nice, but his appearance may be scary for some people given that he's built like a wall, but he's really a sweetheart and can cry from watching a movie. If anything, my mom is the person who wears the pants in the house. She stopped a little as she said, be careful, my little brothers love to cause chaos, so don't give them ammo against, or God so help I'll shove one of my horns where the sun doesn't shine. Izuku lifted his thumbs as he shivered in fear as he knew Pony meant it. Pony walked to the front door and knocked on it rapidly, but then a huge scream came, for the love of God, if you're some of those scout girls, I'll. The door was opened when a woman with blonde hair and cow horns stood there looking at her daughter, Pony. Sweetie the woman hugged the teenager who was more than eager to return the huge only for the woman to separate all of a sudden. Wait how are you here and doesn't school start tomorrow? Pony nodded, well mom, Izuku and I went on a date in America. Izuku teleported us here from his house to here, but we had some trouble on our date so we came here directly. The hero blinked a little before she massaged her head and said, Okay, I can technically arrest you both for illegal quirk usage, but I'll let it slide this time. She grabbed Pony and dragged her as she said, Tell me everything about Japan, sweetie. It's been a while since I've been there. The girl smiled as she used her horn to drag Izuku inside her home with the boy tilting his head in confusion feeling left out. Cow Lady looked at him and said, Well, how can I forget about you? The little punk who stole my pony's heart. She looked at her daughter, Go bring your pa. I want to have a word with Izuku. The girl at her boyfriend, who swallowed heavily, begging her not to leave as he was seriously afraid of her mother, and the vibe she was giving him was making him feel any better. The girl simply laughed at him as she went away to bring her father. Cow Lady began to circle him, but Izuku felt like he was in the ocean with a shark waiting for the perfect moment to strike. She asked him, So you're the big shot that took my girl's heart. I don't see anything impressive about you. She eyed him up and down shaking her head, What does she see in you? Discord popped on his shoulder with a small bowl of popcorn. Well, it all goes back to the fact that he wasn't one of the people who tried to trick your daughter to go shady places with him. The shadiest place he took her to was the beach that they cleaned together. Izuku grabbed him and began to shake him as he asked, Whose side are you on? The heroine then slammed her foot into the ground as she shifted into her minotaur mode and grabbed the boy who squeaked asking him, What are your intentions with my daughter? And you better be honest with me, because if you thought ponies' horns are painful, wait till I use you for target practice with mine. I just want to make her happy. I don't want anything other than that. She eyed him for a moment as she asked, Are you sure? The boy nodded fearfully, but suddenly she let him down as she hugged him saying, Welcome to the family, kid. And from now on I'm uh. Izuku stood there as he said quietly, What the fuck just happened here? Cow Lady heard him as she laughed at him. 
Her daughter told her that her boyfriend was a bundle of nerves, but she didn't think he was so funny to toy with. The boy literally melted between her hands. She looked over the corner to see her husband still crying that his daughter is there. Seriously, Harold, how can someone like you be such a crybaby? Man up for once. The man looked at her and said, I'm just happy that I saw my baby girl. Harold was a six feet, man with an ox head and a serious expression etched into his face. He had huge horns on his head. His entire body was muscled from working on the farm from planting to taking care of the animals, but his appearance was a contrast to his behavior. The man was soft-hearted, and he can cry from watching a sad commercial. Cow Lady said, well, you have to meet your daughter's boyfriend. Suddenly a huge ruckus was heard from the second floor of their house as two boys came crumbling down, Pony has a boyfriend, who in their right mind would want to date her. The girl frowned as her brother snickered at her. Meanwhile, Izuku was standing on the side confused about what he should do. Discord then appeared and said, I suggest we book it with her. Izuku replied, I think that they might chase me to Japan, and I don't want to risk it honestly. The ex-lord of chaos nodded as he also felt confused. Pony saw her boyfriend standing there not understanding what was happening. She went and grabbed him saying, Izuku this is my family. She said pointing to everyone, this pa the huge man smiled at him which Izuku found unsettling given his scary appearance. But he couldn't judge people on their appearance, my ma she said pointing to cow lady, I hope she didn't mess with you too much, it's kinda her thing to scare people. That's why we put a scarecrow that looks like her. This caused the woman to frown. Pony then took an unimpressed look as she pointed to the two boys to the side saying, and these dorks are my younger twin brothers John and Jack. The two frowned at the less than respectful introduction as they said, hey, at least we didn't spend most of our childhood watching manga hoping for it to become one day real. Pony then sent two of her horns to skewer her brothers who ran away. The rest of the time at her family's home was as eventful. He talked with her dad and found that the guy was originally Japanese, but he changed his name when came from Japan to merge better with the American society. Pony's mother tried to scare him some more, but Pony always stopped her. Her brothers begged him to give him some juice on their older sister, but remembering her threat, he wisely didn't say anything. In the end, Izuku used Pony's room to go back to his room in Japan. They walked to Yue, as they went to the dorm so they won't miss the curfew. Izuku looked at Pony who was smiling happily as she leaned her head against his arm. He asked her, did you like our date? The girl looked at him smiling, of course, it's the best thing ever. You also got to meet my family, and my parents think that you're so cool, so that's something. The boy chuckled, well, I can't say I didn't like them, but your mom is seriously scary. The girl laughed at him as she said, well, look at the bright side, she didn't chase outside the house like the last boy I brought over. Izuku laughed for a moment before his head registered her words, and felt a shiver of fear run down his spine. Izuku walked to her dorms. The moment they entered they saw Setsuna snuggling with a baby raptor that was wearing a diaper of all things. Kendo looked at Izuku and Pony. The girl quickly went to Izuku saying, why did you give her this? The boy chuckled as he said, she asked nicely. The orange-haired girl tried to grab him, but he disconnected his body causing Takage to yell, Hey, that's my thing. Kendo shook her head, No, Izuku I want you to tell Setsuna to give you the baby raptor. This thing will cause a huge mess. She looked at the girl who was holding the baby dinosaur tightly like she was holding her own flesh and blood. The boy walked away as he said, Sorry, but that sound like a you problem. He looked at Pony and kissed her on the cheek. Hitsuka tried to lunge at him, but he jumped, See you tomorrow, my little pony. He ran away as Kendo followed him demanding he come back here and face her like a man. Takage looked at her and gave her the baby dinosaur saying, it's your time to watch over Rodney. The horse girl could only look at the baby dinosaur which cooed at her causing the girl's heart to flutter, maybe it won't be so bad. She looked only to see a pissed off Itsuka coming back from her failed attempt to catch Izuku. The second day came and everyone was getting ready for their first class in UA. Izuku himself was extremely excited. He was bouncing from side to side causing small tremors of reality shift to occur. Discord appeared and whacked him on the head, enough. I think you almost changed the entire history of the Middle East and Russia during your excitement tremors. The boy nodded as he sheepishly focused to turn everything back to normal. Once it was done, he went to 1B dorms to take Pony to her first class for the day. When he knocked on the door, he was stunned when a missile of orange hair collided with him. He looked up to see Kendo with a smirk on her face as she held him with her giant hands, you can't escape now, can you? The boy simply phased through her hands causing her smirk to fall as she said, damn it, this is seriously cheating. Then Izuku inflated his hands causing a cloud of despair to appear on Kendo, now I'm never going to stand out. Izuku laughed, it's nice to see you too, Kendo. The girl tried to smile, but couldn't as she said, please take that dinosaur back. Takage is forcing us to take care of it and scoop away its poop. Izuku smiled as he said, how about I make Takage room a habit for her pet. The orange haired girl smiled, great do it now. Shouldn't we wait for Takage to come out first? Kendo shook her head as she said, no, do it now. Because of her, I lost all of my coffee yesterday trying to take care of her mini monster. I want my vengeance. Izuku shrugged as he transformed the girl's room into a jungle. Three minutes later, a scream was heard as Takage came down looking like a mad woman. 
She looked at Kendo who was laughing with Izuku standing beside her. She yelled, that's not funny. I honestly thought that I was lost in the past if it wasn't for the instructions the nerd left me to find the door. Kendo bowed, consider this was vengeance for my coffee that disappeared yesterday due to your Dino monster. Seriously, I had to go through an entire batch to keep up with it. Setsuna frowned, he's a baby. He has a lot of energy. Well now, he's inside your room in his habit. Don't worry only you and him live there. Isn't that right Midoriya? The boy nodded as he saw Pony. He grabbed her hand and quickly left 1B's dorms leaving both girls to argue. He kissed Pony as he said, ready for the first day of UA. I know I am. The boy was bouncing with excitement. He looked at the huge building that is UA. He was excited as he walked the halls where people like All Might, Endeavor, Headshot, Best Genist, and many others walked before him. Pony nodded, I'm so happy. I can't wait to see and experience all the training that Ma went through here before she went back to the USA with Pa. Izuku nodded remembering that the real reason Pony's father left Japan was because of her father. He fell in love with her, and he decided to live with her in her country. Both of them walked in the hallways as Izuku watched the classes. He then said, Wow, this place is really big. I think I might get lost. Discord appeared saying, Impossible, you have a GPS in your mind. Use it to navigate this maze. Izuku laughed at him, it was just a metaphor. I know I can't get lost here. It would be embarrassing, to say the least, the guy trained with the Lord of Chaos or Ex-Lord in your case, and All Might the greatest hero of all time got lost inside his hero school. Pony nodded, agreed. It sounds kinda pathetic when you put it that way, but smile because I know today is going to be awesome. Izuku was excited like she was on the first day, but he couldn't wonder what were they going to do, but he shrugged since he was going to know either way. He walked Pony with Pony till they reached Class 1B. He looked at her and kissed her lips saying, have a good day sweetheart. The girl smiled, you too Zuzu, and try not to cause too much trouble. I promise. The girl didn't seem too convinced as she said, Discord keep a good eye on him, and make sure he doesn't get into too much trouble. The creature appeared on his shoulder as he said, I promise, Scout's honor. The girl nodded as she entered her classroom with Izuku left behind as he said, I feel attacked. Discord replied, you should. Izuku pouted, Mini, you're an extension of me now, so that means you should take my side not anyone else's. Discord laughed as Izuku looked at him, isn't that how it's supposed to work? Discord shook his head much to Izuku's dismay as he explained, you see it's true that I'm only an extension of you at this point, but I also have free will. While I can't go away from you, and I'm entirely bonded to you no matter what, I can still have my own thoughts, ideas, and feelings. In other words, think of me as your personal dark shadow. Izuku hummed as he stood in front of the door of Class 1A. Wow, I didn't notice when I dropped off Pony, but these doors are huge. I think they're made for people with giant affection quirks like Mount Lady. Discord snorted, or it was made because someone was trying to compensate for something. This made Izuku's face go red as he heard Discord laugh. He entered the classroom only to be greeted by the most unholy sight. Get your legs off the table. This is an insult to the people who were here before us, and the fine craftsmen who worked day and night to produce such fine tables. Ada stood reprimanding Bakugo who looked like he didn't give a fuck at all because he didn't. The blonde boy looked at him as he said, What did your previous school put a stick up your ass, so you think you're better than me? Ada took a step back as he adjusted himself. Let's start again, I'm Tenya Ada, and I'm for Summy High. He was cut off by Bakugo who said, Summy, ha. Huh? So you're an elitist. I'm gonna have fun tearing you a new one. Ada was taken by surprise as he gasped and said, You dare threaten your own classmate. Are you sure that you should be in the hero course? Izuku walked up to Ida and greeted him as he felt Bakugo look at him with the fury of a thousand demons. Hey Ida, how are you doing today? The boy swiveled on his feet as he faced Izuku taking both boys by shock. Ada looked at Izuku, Midoriya, you saw the truth of this test. When everyone went running, you ran to help her. I must admit that you're the superior student. Izuku rubbed the back of his head as he laughed awkwardly at Ida's earnest behavior. Izuku then turned around as he felt someone enter the room only to see Achako who was smiling at him. Midoriya, how are you doing? Are you excited as I am for the first day? She stopped for a bit before she asked, and was your date with Pony last night? Was it good? Did you have fun? Did you kiss? Izuku's sweat dropped as he said, well, it was fine all things considered. Discord appeared on his shoulder as he said, he got kicked out of the cafe. He looked at his mentor as he said in annoyance, they didn't need to learn that. Why did you tell them that? Izuku grabbed them as he began to shake him rapidly causing both of his friends to sweat drop at the comedic. Izuku was then slapped across the head. He looked only to see Dark Shadow, Takoyami's quirk above him as it said, Hey, stop abusing him. We sentient quirks have feelings too. Izuku frowned as Discord said, Your teacher's coming. Take your seats, you want to give him a good impression. And true to that, everyone was in their seat as they all watched a caterpillar of sorts roll inside the room making everyone ask themselves, Is that his mood of transportation? Aizawa came out of his cocoon, and he entered his teacher mode looking around as he nodded, Good, you're all rational students. He then introduced himself, For those who don't know my name is Shout Aizawa and I'll be your homeroom teacher for the next three years. He scratched his head as he said, Now, I know this might be shocking, but I'll give you all clothes and I want to all head to the training field. He picked a sports uniform and threw it to Izuku who caught it before he left. Izuku blinked as he held the uniform. 
He looked at the others and said, well, let's go. With that, everyone exited the classroom not knowing the ordeal that they were about to face. A chaotic day. Izuku was the first student to make it out to the field given that can effectively slow time around him or contort reality to his well. He was greeted by Aizawa sitting there watching the clouds and waiting patiently for his students. The boy grinned a lot as he made his footsteps soundless and made his way toward him. Once he was beside him, he asked, So you and Ms. Joke are really dating? The man jumped around throwing his scarf toward the boy who made himself intangible. The hero looked at him and used his quirk to scare the boy who didn't flinch only saying, When you had looked death in the eye like I did, something like this seems trivial. The man scratched his head and deactivated his quirk. Day one, and you're already proving to be a problem child. First demons in your room, second giving your classmate a baby dinosaur egg, and now talking about me and that she demon of a woman to be in a relationship. He pinched the bridge of his nose before saying, You need to control yourself, problem child. Izuku shrugged, In my defense, I have ten years worth of fun with my quirk that Nezu promised me to do. He said it is best so I can help him rule the world after he passes away. Someone to carry his legacy. Aizawa's eyes widened as he readied himself to call the Fkan one to the other teachers so they knew that Nezu's world domination plan has kicked off, also said to make a sleepless hobo's life in Yue. Harder than it already is. Aizawa's eyebrows twitched, do you have any idea who is that? Aizawa felt his sanity fade. Of course, the rat wants to make his life hard. The man looked at him, I don't have the slightest clue. Good luck looking for him. The boy smirked, and regarding the Ms. Joke part, didn't you call the coconut that you emerged with from my room of horrors Emmy which is Ms. Joke's maiden name? Again his eyebrows twitched, and he felt like he was being blackmailed by Nezu 2.0, the Chaos Edition. The man could have sworn he heard Nezu's laughter here in the field, but swallowed a huge lump in his throat and tried the best to ignore him. The boy was going to be a handful, but with a power like his, he was going to be a walking nightmare to villains. On the other hand, this boy will be the end of him. The man looked around him, yeah, we're dating, but I only act like that we aren't dating so villains won't target her. Unlike me, she didn't manage to grab the anger of several underground warlords who want nothing, but gut her alive and anyone she cares for. He stopped before adding, so do your best to stay quiet about this, or else. The man said gripping his scarf tightly. The boy nodded his head quickly as discord popped on his shoulder, well, you can't kill him because if you do, you kill me too. I'm too young to die never mind too handsome. The ex-lord then fell on the boy's shoulder as he covered his face with the back of his hand. Aizawa looked at him with an unimpressed look, couldn't you have given your power to someone more rational? You instead gave them to a child who Nezu took him under his wing to unleash his legion of terror and demons on us. I'm sure I can hear the horns of destruction from here. The chaos being shrugged, I didn't have time. If I tried to be picky I wouldn't have made it at all, plus admit you know you like him, and he's going to be your best student. He said as he jumped on Aizawa's shoulder who quickly swatted him away with a doubtful look on his face before a smirk appeared on his face. Yeah, he'll become my favorite student given if he can survive today. The erasure user said as Izuku glared at Discord before grabbing him, and began to yank him back and forth in panic for setting his teacher on him while the chaos being defended saying that the boy already did so by scaring him. Aizawa smiled in satisfaction, as the two began to strangle each other leaving him alone for the time being. He waited for five more minutes before the students began to show up. Once everyone was there, he used his scarf to separate Izuku from his spiritual mentor. Aizawa was unsure what the ex-lord of chaos was at this point, but as long as he kept problem child on a leash, he didn't care too much about the specifics. It took you all ten minutes to arrive here, you kids aren't rational. Next time, I wanted to be half this time, got it. The students nodded their heads saying, yes, Aizawa sensei. The nighttime hero nodded his head as he said, good, now we can move on with our program. Today, you'll all be doing a quirk apprehension test. He was cut off by Achako who said, Sensei, but we're going to miss orientation. The man looked at her and said, This is UA. And its teachers are given special privileges to run their class as they see fit. Plus, we don't have time for such needless things. You can all catch up about your fashion clothes when we're finished here. Also here in UA, we work in a free teaching system where the teachers are given the freedom to do whatever they want. If you want to hit the big leagues, you have to forget about such complimentary ideal stuff. He looked at the students, any more questions that need to be asked. Good, he said, before carrying on, you see the Ministry of Education has a flawed idea that people are equal, so they cut quirk usage in PE, this is an outdated method and an ineffective one. Here you'll be forced to give your all, so get ready, but before we start how about a small demonstration? He looked at Izuku throwing him a ball he was holding. Izuku frowned at Aizawa's words regarding being born equal, it felt like the man was satisfying all the torture he went through just for being born quirkless unlike everyone else. He didn't hear Aizawa's orders the first time till Discord slammed him on the head saying, go to the circle and mope later on. The boy slowly made his way to the and stood in it as Aizawa said, Midoriya, you came the first in the entrance exam, right? The boy nodded his head, good, I want you here to throw the ball with your all to gain the furthest distance you can muster. The boy nodded and began to wonder what should he use. Telekinesis, fire, teleport. There were so many options to choose from, and all would guarantee a good and remarkable score. 
He was cut from his musings as Aizawa said, Come on, we don't have all of the day. Throw it already, or get ready to be expelled. The boy nodded his head as he said, All right, I know what to do. He then turned his hand into a claw and grabbed the air itself as he ripped it apart leaving a gaping hole that lead to space, and the moon could be clearly seen from there. It was at this point that one of the students asked if that was the moon to which Izuku replied, Why yes. Yes, it is. The boy threw the ball through before closing the hole waiting for the device with his teacher to register. The man waited for a couple of moments as the device began to malfunction before it showed the symbol of infinity. Aizawa scratched his head, I guess I should have seen this one coming. He turned to the students and said, The exams you're about to do today will show your limits. All of the students were shocked that he scored infinity. Bakugo was the one who was shocked the most. When the nerd saved him, he thought that it was only telekinesis, but turns out the nerd was holding out on him. He was looking down on him. No way was that happening on his watch. This must be rectified immediately, or else Deku would start looking down on him like he always did. The boy's hands began to sparkle. Deku, you worthless son of bitch. Tell me since when you can do this. Under normal circumstances, Izuku would tremble in fear, but now he didn't. Was it that he was technically stronger than Bakugo, perhaps? Was it because Discord had long sessions with him telling him how the blonde is a sociopath with a complex the size of his own head? Maybe. Or was it because the boy didn't feel threatened anymore by the blonde since he can send him from where he came without breaking a sweat? Yeah, that's why. Izuku merely snapped his fingers rewriting reality itself making the blonde decide not to attack him and to only brood on anger. Aizawa blinked in confusion as he tightened his hold on his capture scarf. He could have sworn he saw Bakugo try and attack Midoriya, but now he was standing there and perhaps boiling in anger, but why was he standing? He looked at his problem child and knew that the boy must have rewritten reality to make Bakugo only seethe. The man promptly shrugged as long as it keeps his work easy, he doesn't care. The students overcame the shock of the infinity score as they all began cheering, that's so cool. We get to use our quirks, Siro the boy with the tape dispenser said with a smile on his face excited to test out his quirk. He was then followed by Mina who was jumping up and down, this is going to be so fun. I can't wait till my turn comes around. Her words didn't go unnoticed by the erasure hero who frowned at the notion that this is fun. The hero looked at his students giving them the scariest smile ever and said in a low eerie voice, You think this is fun? You think that heroics is about fun? Well, how about we make this endeavor of ours a little bit more interesting and fun? From now on, the person who scores the least on the quirk test will be expelled. This caused murmurs of fear to resonate among the children who seemed afraid at the prospect that they were going to be expelled on the first day without even getting to get the syllabus. Achako was clearly displeased as she yelled, expelled on the first day. You can't do that, we only arrived here. That's totally not fair. Aizawa gave her a sharp look, fair. You think the world is fair? No, it isn't fair. Egotistical villains, natural disasters, floods, wars, diseases, discrimination, and many more aren't fair. That's why you, he said pointing at Uraraka, a hero must strive to combat them and make the world a safe and fair place. For that, if you think that the next three years will be a walk in the park where you chat and go to eat at MC, you're in for a rude awakening. For that, I want you all to work your hardest through the next three years. His face went to normal, I want you all to go beyond plus ultra. The students were stunned but nodded their heads as Aizawa said, alright we're losing daylight. Get your asses in gear, so we can move to the first test. As the students moved to the first test, Achako looked at Izuku and said, man, this is really nerve-wracking. I mean a test with the threat of expulsion is not what I expected on the first day. Izuku nodded his head though he silently gulped since he heard a particularly nasty rumor about his homeroom teacher that said he expels anyone with what he calls no potential. The boy shuddered at another rumor that he expelled an entire classroom last year. Honestly, he didn't want to find out if both are true or not. Hida then gave his five cents. Honestly, I don't approve of this public hazing, but if it must be done, so we can be better heroes then so be it. The boy said as one hand adjusted his glasses and the other was chopping the arm. Izuku's sweat dropped as he thought, I wonder what Pony is doing right now. I bet their teacher is currently putting them two through the ringer. I only hope she survives today. Back in the cafeteria, Nezu was still giving his speech. Pony due to how long it took put her head on Ibarra's shoulder and fell asleep with the religious girl herself falling asleep on her too. Back with Izuku, the tests began with the 50 meter run. The first two people were Ida and a girl named Suyuasui who had a mutation quirk that gave her frog-like features. The two stood at the beginning line as they waited for the signal before it went off. Once the run began Ada's mufflers began to smoke as he went flying through the field and finished first as he said, I could only use so much on this small track. He scored 2.04 sex. Asui hoped her way through as she managed to score about 5.26 sex. The girl ribbited a little as she said, I honestly thought I would do better, ribbit. She then walked back to the class with Ida. They were followed by Achako and a boy with a tail named Mishura Ajiro. Yuraka used her quirk zero gravity to lighten her clothes and ran as quickly as she can once the race began. In the end, she managed to score 7.12 sex. She smiled, well, that beats my middle school score. Ajiro on the other hand merely jumped using his tail as a booster till he reached the end scoring 5.12 sex. 
he frowned given that his quirk doesn't really give him any advantage on any of the tests other than this in the ball throw. The next pair were Mina and an eccentric blonde named Yugo Ayama. The blonde used his quirk naval laser to propel himself forward. It seemed that he would come first, but he then stopped and fell over since he can't use his quirk for more than one second. In the end, Mina made it first through the finish line, and then Ayama followed her a couple of moments later. Then came the most controversial part of the 50-meter run, Gyro against Yeyurazu. At first, it began normal with Yeyurazu making skates with rockets boosters on them, and Gyro safely using OFA, but when they began Gyro tried to run only for the power to go off and for her to fly face first. She looked and asked, what the hell? She couldn't get to continue the question as Aizawa wrapped his bandages around asking, I erased your quirk. Were you trying to break yourself? He then pulled her closer, but what happened next shocked everyone. Once Gyro was in front of him, she kicked where it really hurts, and said, Listen here, I don't care if you're my teacher, but do this with me again and I'll call my parents to tell my lawyers that my teacher is sexually harassing me, got it. The man was groaning in pain as she added, Second, I already told the school that my quirk mutated during the entrance exam, but now I have control over it. So the real question, why were you talking to me as if I have a fetish for breaking my bones? The man stood up rubbing his groin, I admit this was an oversight on my end, but next time try to use your words rather than your legs. The two glared at each other before Aizawa said, great, two problem children this year. He can already hear Nezu laughing from his office. In the end, Momo got 3.1 sex while Kayoka got 2.86 sex. Now, it was Izuku's turn against Bakugo. The boy smiled as he waited for the signal. Once it went off, Izuku transformed into a phoenix and flew quickly to the end scoring 2.1 sex while Bakugo scored 5.12. After that began the grip test, it was where everyone has decent scores, but three stood out. First was Mizo Shoji a boy with six arms who managed to score 540 kgs while another boy with huge lips managed to score 420 kgs. The shocker was Izuku who manifested extra arms, 10 to be exact. He turned them into diamond-like material and squeezed breaking the device. The boy blinked as his teacher sighed saying, I'll put it as infinity. Mizo came up to him, your quirk must be handy given you can alter reality itself. The boy chuckled a little trying to forget the hell he had to go through to train his powers. After that, it was the jumping high test where Izuku used his flame powers to bypass it by flying over the pit of sand to the other end. He didn't know why, but for the briefest of moments, he saw Todoroki glaring at him like he killed his mom or something. After that, it was some usual tests such as push-ups and sit-ups where he used his power to give extra juice to keep him going for the longest time possible. After that, it was the repeated side steps where Izuku turned his legs into rubber and gave a spring-like shape as he made the ground rubber-like. In the end, he passed with a very high score on this part of the test. After that, it was the ball throw but Izuku stood out as he already performed it. He looked around looking for Discord only to see him talking to Dark Shadow much to Takoyami's displeasure. Izuku frowned too as he tried to summon him, but the being merely flipped him off. He sighed as he saw Bakugo stomp to the circle. He quickly walked to Kayoka and said, Cover your ears. The girl although weirded out nodded. Bakugo then tried to unleash the greatest explosion he can to score an infinity like Izuku, but only ended up with one kilometer. The boy screamed in anger, Listen here Deku, this doesn't mean you're better than me, got it. The boy saluted him, of course, Captain Porcupine. The blonde haired felt his eye twitch but went back to his place wondering when the nerd grew a spine. He was supposed to be a pebble, but now he felt like a fucking mountain. He was followed by Achako who merely touched the ball before sending it flying away into the cloud never to be seen again. Aizawa sighed, problem children, that's another infinity. The girl blushed heavily as she walked back to her place trying to avoid questions from her classmates. After that, it was the final test, the endurance run where Izuku was creative as he was opening portal after portal and covered the distance much easier than others. Finally, the scores were finished and Izuku was first, Momo was second, Shoto was third, and so until the last where Minoru was last, so the boy was crying that he was about to be expelled. Izuku wanted to sympathize with him, he really did, but the boy spent most of his time sexually harassing the girls which made Izuku angry. He had a girlfriend, so he knew it wasn't exactly cool. He can also tell from the girls' expressions that they're also kinda happy the boy was going home. Aizawa then looked at everyone, and by the way, no one is getting expelled. Everyone froze as he carried on, it was a logical ruse to make sure that all of you gave it your all. The man said as he smiled creepily and Izuku can tell from the expression of the girls that they were disappointed. Even Momo when she said that it was obvious, was disappointed that the pervert wasn't gone. Aizawa carried on, but that be said, I expelled an entire classroom last year, so mind to be careful, you might have passed, but believe you barely made the cut, so I would watch my back if I were you. The man stalked off as he told everyone to go get their syllabus. Izuku walked off with Yuraraka and Ida saying, Man, today was really something. I can't wait till I can cuddle with Pony. This managed to get a reaction from Ida talking about morals which caused the green-haired boy to say, Ida, I said cuddle not of babies. You should seriously learn how to calm yourself. Both Achako and Ida blushed at the comment as Izuku just laughed. After that, Izuku walked to class 1B to see his girlfriend. He waited for a bit beside the doors till they finally opened as their homeroom teacher left. 
he looked inside and saw that Pony was chatting with Itsuka and Ibarra. Gaining a devious smirk, the boy melted into the floor as he slowly crept into Pony's shadow. Discord appeared beside the door frame saying, this is a bad idea. Once he was in position, he popped from it and yelled, got you. The two girls with Pony shrieked in fear while the girl herself having experienced this more than once replied by throwing her hoofed feet backward causing a huge crunching noise to appear, and every male in the vicinity of the sound to cry out in agony. Izuku slumped to the ground, that's really uncool Pony. You almost ended me. That really hurts you know, never hit the guy where it hurts. It's a golden rule. The boy stood up weakly as he rubbed his groin mentally saying, Now, I know how Mr. Aizawa felt when Gyro kicked him. Pony looked at him with little remorse, I told you to never scare me again, but you would never listen, consider this as your punishment. The boy frowned as he saw Itsuka laughing in the background at what she considered payback for the Dino thing, while Ibarra smiled at him. The boy then said, Okay, aside from you trying to get my soul to leave my body, Kendo clutched her stomach as she laughed out loud, How was your day? Mine was interesting. The girl put her hand on her chin, well, it really wasn't all that. It was mostly doing orientation among other stuff. I had a good nap while the principal was speaking. Ibarra's hair makes for a really soft pillow kinda like yours. Both mentioned teens blinked before running their hands through their hair and saying that they don't find it that soft. The boy shook his head as he said, well, I'm here now, and you can sleep on my hair as much as you want. The girl giggled as she ran her hand through his messy curls while Setsuna said, let me have some of this action. A lizard girl began to run her hand through the curls as the boy went red. Her hand was slapped away by Pony who said, Zuzu is my boyfriend, go find your own. The lizard girl pouted as she walked away before blowing a kiss at Izuku much to Pony's ire. The boy saw the angry look and quickly did something to calm her down. The boy then used his powers to summon a bouquet consisting of roses, lilies, and many more. The girls began to squeal at how romantic this was, while Pony smiled at this, thanks Izuku, I really needed this. The boy gave the girl the flowers and she gave them a huge sniff. She then plucked the rose and smelt it as the girls cooed. She then, eat it much to the girl's shock while Izuku just stared blankly at her before shrugging. Kanoko one of her classmates yelled, where are you doing? You should put it in a vase not eat it. She was beyond shocked at how Pony was calmly eating the rose. This was a sweet romantic gesture only to be thrown away in such a way, it felt wrong. The horse girl looked at her, did you forget that I'm half horse? I eat these for lunch literally. Look in my lunch bag. The girls curiously opened the girl's lunch bag only to see a bunch of green grass, hay, and a lot of flowers. The girl's sweat dropped at the contents, she's taking this half horse thing seriously. The girl walked out with her boyfriend and they began to talk about their day. The girl asked him, so Zuzu, what did you do on the first day? I already told you what I did, so spill. The girl ordered as she pointed her finger at him making him chuckle a little. The boy said, well, my teacher put us through the ringer when he did a sudden quirk test to test our abilities, and it was intense, to say the least. The girl tilted her head as she didn't get what was intense about that. She actually preferred that to the boring speech she had to endure. The girl asked, I don't get it. What's so wrong with that? I mean it's better than heeding some boring old speech. I'm sure I almost died from boredom. Discord popped into existence as he said, it wasn't the test that was intense. It was the end game that was intense. Their teacher actually told them that if anyone came in last that he will be expelled since he has no potential. Pony whistled, wow, that was one heck of the day. Still seems a bit better than watching a speech for two hours. The boy shook his head as he looked at her and knew that she was stubborn as a boar. Though, our homeroom teacher did say that we're going to do the same thing tomorrow morning. Really, did he also threaten you with expulsion? The boy wondered out loud as the girl shook her head causing the boy to deflate making the girl giggle. No, our homeroom teacher said that it's just a test to see how creative we are with our quirks. It seems really fun. Good thing I ended with him, not yours. The girl chirped happily. Yeah, you have a nice guy, and I had ended up with a quirkus bastard who wants to make everywhere revolve about quirks. The boy looked away, seems a fair trade. The girl tilted her head, quirkist. Yeah, turns out our teacher believes that our society revolves around quirks. He said and I quote him, the Ministry of Education is irrational for not allowing quirks to be used during PE, and a false notion to give people that they are born equal. The boy looked away remembering all his other teachers, he reminded me of all my other lousy teachers. He sounded like some lame distro supporter who was thrown into our time. The girl rubbed his shoulder as she understood that even though Izuku wasn't technically quirkless now, it was still a sore subject to him. The girl hugged him as she asked, do you think that people are equal quirked or not? I do. Being quirkless or not, we all have the same right and have the same chances in life, so don't care what this jerk says Zuzu. She grabbed his hand and dragged him saying, let's go to my dorm so we can hang out. The boy was pulled along with the enthusiastic horse girl. When they were gone, somebody stood out of the shadows with a somewhat somber look on his face. It was Aizawa, the hero was somewhat disappointed with himself. When said that the Ministry of Education is giving a false sense, he hadn't taken into consideration what Izuku might think. He was already told by All Might as well as the other teachers where the boy's powers actually came from. 
Like others, he was disturbed regarding the villain thing but calmed down once he was told that the villain was now nothing but a nuisance slash mentor to the boy. When he talked about the ministry, he didn't mean that quirkless people were less than those with quirks, but he meant that the ministry is holding people back not allowing them to show creativity with their gifts. Maybe, he should have said something other than people aren't equal. Now, he had to deal with a student of his who at most doesn't respect him, and at worst he doesn't trust him which will be a huge hinder in cases of life and death situations. He shook his head as he said, I really messed up this time. Back with Izuku, the boy was dragged to 1B dorms with Pony. Once he entered it, he saw the boys playing video games. Kendo was talking with Tetsu. Shizaki was reading the Bible. And Setsuna was hugging her Dino baby while feeding it milk. Should he tell her that dinosaurs don't drink milk? He shook his head wanting to see the end of this show when it backfires in her face. Hey, he heard a loud shout. He looked at the source only for it to be the boy from yesterday, Manoma if he remembered correctly. The boy walked to him and said, What is a member of the inferior class one a doing here? Are you here too? He was knocked out by Kendo performing a neck chop as she apologized. The boy sweat dropped at this as the boy was led away from them. Pony then began to hop, so what do you want to do? How about we watch a movie with each other? Or we can read a book. Or we can. The held her as he said, take deep breaths, Pony. The girl began to take a deep breath as the boy let her go and asked, are you calm now? The girl nodded her head as her boyfriend said, let's go and watch a movie. He then gained an idea. How about instead of watching it, we go inside the movie? The girl was intrigued by the idea as she nodded her head. Before she can speak, one of her classmates Ryaiko Yanagi popped out of nowhere asking him, Can you spawn me inside a horror movie? I really want to be a part of one. The boy blinked as he thought about it. He shook his head as he didn't want someone dying from a movie. The boy shook his head as he said, Sorry, but I can't. There's no guarantee that you might survive, and I don't want to be responsible for your death. The girl frowned but nodded her head in an understanding manner, How about you join us instead? The girl thought about it for a moment before smiling and agreeing. The boy looked at Pony, so what do you want to watch? The horse girl tapped her chin before answering, I want to go inside the Avengers movie. Both Izuku and Ryaiko shrugged as Pony brought out a movie and put it inside the DVD player. Other people came to watch as Izuku snapped their fingers and both him, Ryaiko, and Pony was now inside the movie much to everyone's shock. It gave them a good laugh as Izuku tried to make sense of their presence not thinking the whole thing through, but in the end, they got out of it and Izuku went to his dorm before curfew. The next day, the Chaos user was sitting in class as he tried to keep up with Present Mix who was giving them a lecture about English grammar. It was boring, to say the least, but he was listening intently to him. He didn't want to get on his teacher's bad side at the end of the day. Today was boring, to say the least. One would think that being in the hero course might mean doing awesome stuff, but at the end of the day, they were still high school students as they had to take regular courses. The boy looked at the board where the voice hero was explaining before the bell went on signaling the end of the period much to the boy's relief. The boy was jolted out of his thoughts when Yuraka asked him, So who do you think is going to be our teacher, Deku? The boy blinked at the nickname, Where did you hear that? The girl blushed as she said, Well, I heard that blonde guy says that to you after we finished the quirk test yesterday, and I thought it was cute. It has a you can do it vibe if you know what I mean. The boy smiled as he said, Well, it actually means useless, this made the girl gasp, but you can call me that since it sounds nice coming from you. The girl blushed as Izuku teased her, Don't tell me that you're having a crush on me now. Pony might be jealous if she hears about this. The girl began to wave her hands as a huge blush emerged on her face as she tried to defend herself from the accusations. Izuku could only laugh at her as he said, Calm down. I'm just messing with you. The girl pouted as she began to punch him playfully on his arm saying that he was mean. She stopped as she asked, Who do you think is going to be our heroic teacher? The boy already knew, but he decided to play them at the request of All Might. He simply shrugged meaning that he didn't have the slightest clue or idea of his identity. The girl began to tap her chin as she said, I think that he has to be a high-ranking hero, but someone who might actually come here, so that throws Endeavor out of the equation. The boy nodded as the flame hero wasn't a people person, maybe Ruka the dragon hero. The girl asked. Suddenly, a loud noise came from outside the door as it slid open when a huge man came in yelling, I am here. A battle of chaos. Silence rang in the class as everyone looked with awe at the hulking figure that just entered the room. It was none other than All Might himself. All the students were now giddy that they were going to be taught by the number one hero himself. It wasn't very common to see nowadays, so forget about being taught by him. The students began to cheer quickly as they looked at him while the hero was smiling at the fact that the students were happy to see him. Kirishima stood up quickly exclaiming, All Might's going to teach us this year. That's so manly. Asui followed him adding, Look, I think he's wearing his sliver age suit. Neat, ribbit. All the students then began to give hums of approval and appreciation toward the hero who beamed in happiness, ha ha. Yes, students, it is I All Might, and from now on I'm going to be your heroics teacher. And you're in luck since you're the first class that I'll ever teach in my life. The blonde hero smiled as he saw the students cheer him on. His smile flattered a little when he saw his successor frowning while covering her ears as she pointed to them meaning that he should use his indoor voice because he was hurting her. All of the students then began to ask him multiple questions as All Might cleared his throat, All right everyone please calm down. 
I know that you're excited, but if you keep talking we'll go nowhere. Now as for your first lesson of the day, it's going to be. He then held a small rectangle that had the word battle on it, battle training. That Hugo smirked, battle. Izuku carried on his thought as he smiled himself while Discord appeared on his shoulder worried that his successor might overdo it today. Training the entire classroom buzzed into life once more as All Might again cleared his throat to have everyone's attention. All the students then looked at the blonde hero who said, All right, I hope this little habit of seemingly turning the room into a music party isn't going to be permanent. But yes, today you're all going to use your quirks to fight each. But you forget the most important part about being a hero is the costume. No hero worth his salt is good without a good look. So now, he pressed a button on his phone and the ground beside each student opened up revealing a case. Take your costumes, and go to the changing room so we can begin with the activities in ground beta. The students quickly took their hero costumes running for the changing rooms as fast as humanly possible with side smiles on their faces so wide, All Might smiled himself. Once everyone was out, the hero deflated for a bit saying, The youth of these youngsters sure gives the power to carry on with my duties of being the symbol of peace, but alas it soon may come to an end. In the boys' changing rooms, the boys were all changing their clothes quickly so they can begin their lesson already. Hiroshima looked at Izuku and said, Wow, Midoriya, your costume sure isn't all that flashy compared to your quirk. Though it certainly matches with your plain look I guess. Izuku sweat dropped as he replied, Thanks, I guess. Izuku's costume was made of a plain looking shirt with discord put on its back. Of course, the shirt had some padding to it to protect him from stabs and bullets. He also wore jeans. The boy looked at Kirishima's costume as he said, I think yours also look cool. The hardening boy blushed as he said, you think so. I think it looks a little bit plain compared to the others. Kirishima was wearing black baggy pants in addition to arm braces. He also wore a head brace but also had a shirt tied to a belt that had the letter R in its center. Izuku looked around as he surveyed his class's costumes some were plain looking like him such as Shoji and Sato who were both wearing full body jumpsuits with different colors. Some were interesting such as Todoroki's, the boy had to raise an eyebrow at the ice, was it to scare his opponents because if anything it made him look ridiculous, or mind us, he got the fruit reference but did he really have to emphasize that much on protecting his groin, it made him look sad and desperate. Others were cool such as Takoyami's cape even though it was very simple, he still found it cool, or Kaminari's punk rock outfit. Near the end though, Mindus saw something that made him drool. The boys looked at him confused as he said, look, I found a gift left to us by our predecessors. He said pointing to a hole in the wall. Before he can even continue his rant, the hole was sealed shut. Everyone looked at Midoriya who said, All right, let's go. There's nothing to see here. Kirishima followed him as he told how manly he was, while the others shook their head before following. In the end, Mina cried out in anger, Midoriya, why did you prevent me from seeing heaven? A shaft from the other side of the wall caused him to run out of the room given that he was exposed, because he's not a pervert. Jairo on the other side was fuming as she was contemplating knocking down the wall to send the idiot to kingdom come. She opted against it given that Izuku sealed the wall. She looked at the other girls saying, the pervert had been dealt with. He won't be able to pull any more stunt on us since Midoriya sealed the wall from their end. All the girls present in the room sighed in relief knowing that they can now change without the fear that the little midget or any other pervert for that will be trying to peep at them. The girls then all exited the room as they all went to training ground beta so they can start the day with All Might. Five minutes later, everyone was at the training grounds waiting for All Might to appear as they chatted. Jairo looked at Izuku's costume and smiled, you know with someone with your power set. I thought that you would wear something more colorful and flashier, not something this simplistic. The girl herself was wearing a rather futuristic looking punk rock suit. She was wearing ripped jeans with a jeans jacket that both had bracers on it, maybe to help her with the stress of OFA. In addition to that, she had her boots that had speakers and earphone jack plugs installed into them, so that was cool to some extent. And finally, she also had some speakers installed on her fingerless gloves at the request of Izuku to increase her strength and the strength of her sound-based attacks. Izuku shrugged as he surveyed the costumes of the girls. Some were skin-tight suits such as Achako, Mina, and Suyu. Some were beyond him like Momo's leotard. How was that suit ever accepted beyond him? The last being Tora was just confusing. Was she really wearing just gloves and boots? He had to ask. He walked up to the girl asking her, Toru, is your suit by any chance just boots and gloves? The girl's gloves moved to behind her head as she began to scratch it. Yeah, I mean I'm invisible so it shouldn't be any problem. Plus, it's the only I got going for me. Izuku snapped his fingers and the girl felt something appear on her body. What did you do? The boy smiled softly saying, I just made you a real suit. Something that will protect you from fires, ice, wind, and even cause knives to be bent if you were ever stabbed. Plus, it becomes visible when you take it off and invisible when you put it on. The girl then jumped on the boy hugging him as she thanked him profusely. Thank you so much. This is so awesome. I don't have to walk around naked now. The boy felt a small tap on his shoulder. He looked to see Momo who coughed with a blush, I know it's a lot to ask, but could you perhaps make a suit for me too that suits my quirk? Izuku nodded his head snapping his fingers one more time. 
The suit now looked similar to Momo's but covered a larger portion of her body. She now had a visor. She looked at the boy and tested her suit. Against her best wishes, the suit ripped, but when she took her creation, the suit repaired itself. The girl smiled as she said, I have to thank you, Midoriya. You just made me a great service. The boy waved her off telling her it was no problem. The boy was suddenly grappled to the ground by a crying mind to, you bastard, why did you do that? With that suit, we saw her beautiful body, but now A-G-H-H-H. The boy was silenced as an earphone jack was shoved into his ear sending vibrations to his entire body. As Gyro said, I'd put a sock in my mouth if I were you. The entire class sweat dropped at the whole interaction as they returned to their weight a moment later. Seconds later, All Might came around with a huge smile. My, my, what wonderful costumes do you have? I have to say that you all look heroic in them. Now without any further introductions, let go and have some action. Everyone followed All Might who led them to where they had the entrance exam. Ada raised his hand, Sensei, are we going to fight robots again? The blonde hero shook his head as he said, no young Ada, today you'll all be participating in an indoor fighting simulation. Murmurs began to raise among the students wondering what he was talking about till Tsuyu raised her arm. All Might told her, yes, young Asui. Tsuyu asked, Sensei, isn't this? I don't know, a little bit extreme and advanced. I mean shouldn't at least have some experience beforehand. Everyone nodded with the girl at her reasoning seeing that she was right, but the blonde hero smiled at the girl. The hero then replied, while what you are saying is true, however, the experience that you're talking about will be gained through a first-hand application. You will all fight to learn how things are done given that most hero battles are fought indoors rather than outdoors. All the students nodded as Asui apologized for the interruption, and All Might went back to explain today's lesson, you see today you'll all work in the bomb stimulation. There is a nuclear bomb inside the building that you the heroes are supposed to find while fighting the villains. You must do it on time or else the timer inside the weapon will blow up killing everyone and everything. The students nodded as they began to ask All Might questions from how much is the time allowed to win the fight to whether or not they were going to be expelled. The hero then whistled as he said, Calm down everyone, I don't have super hearing only super strength. Alright, you all have 15 minutes to find the bomb. There will be two teams each, one villain team, and one hero team. Each team will consist of two members. The teams will be picked through lots. And finally, he looked at Bekugo, Under no circumstances are you allowed to maim or hurt your classmates, got it. The blonde teen growls but nods his head nonetheless. The hero then picks up a box as Ida asks him, All Might sir, is this a safe way of doing things? I mean there is sure a better to pick teams other than drawing random lots. Izuku who was beside Ida shook his head, actually, it's the best way to do it correctly. In real life situations, you don't have control over who you end up with. It could be someone you worked with, someone you don't know, or someone you absolutely love, but at the end of the day, you have to work with them. This is the closest case for a real life stimulation we can afford to get our hands on it. Discord then popped up saying, plus, it makes the chaos of two heroes who don't know who to work together with much stronger. The chaos being was then swatted away by a huge fly swatter courtesy of Izuku who looked unamused at being interrupted by the chaos creature. Eda nodded his head as he made a note to anger Izuku or else he might use sticky glue to combat his speed. He sweat dropped at the idea, but with his friend's quirk being chaos he couldn't disregard it as a possibility that his friend made something special for him. All Might coughed, as enlightening as that was, I think it's time for you to pick up your teams. He then pointed to the box saying, in this box, there are two balls each that have a letter on them. The people who have the same letter will be at the same time. Now please, every student comes up and takes a ball to determine which team are you on. The students walked up to All Might and began to pick from the box. Eventually, it was Izuku's turn who took his draw. He looked at the ball which held that the boy looked around searching for his partner. He then heard a bouncing noise only to see Achako coming to him happily as she said, look at this, Deku. We're on the same team. That's super awesome. I'm really excited to work with you. It must be fate telling us that we need to work together. The boy chuckled at her excitement, but he looked around to observe the teams. He noticed Shoto standing with Shoji who both held the letter B. He saw Minda standing next to an uncomfortable Momo each holding the letter C. Kayoko was with Denki holding the letter G. Ajiro was standing with Hakigir who was still bouncing. Happiness for not having to walk around naked in Team J. Takoyami was with Tsuyu on Team F. Siro was with Kirishima on Team E. Bekugo was stuck with a depressed Ida and Team D. Mina was with Aoyama and Team I. Finally, the last team was Team H which consisted of Sato and Koda. All Might smiled seeing that the groups have already been decided, and said, Well young heroes, it would appear that you all have picked your teams. Now let's move on to who will be the villain team, and who will be the hero team. In the end, after getting picked by All Might from lots, teams A, B, G, I, and F were the heroes, while teams D, C, J, E, and H were going to be the villains. All Might then began to pick who will face off against who. In the first draw, it was Team J against Team B. The second draw pinned Team C against Team G. The third draw forced Team F to fight Team E. The fourth draw made each of Teams H and I opponents. And finally, the last draw pinned Team A versus Team D. Bakugo looked at Izuku grinning like a blood-angry savage. The green-haired boy merely stared back annoying the ashen blonde teen who was about to attack him, but he took a deep breath and only gritted his teeth. 
All Might then used a randomizer to see which teams go first and it was a versus D. All Might walked up to both Ada and Bakugo saying, Heroes, today you must think like a villain to help the purpose of the exercise. You both have five minutes to formulate a plan to counter the hero's plans. Use that time wisely. He then handed them a small map. This small map is the structural design of the building that you're going to work in. The bomb is on the first level. Feel free to move it. Good luck. The hero moved away as Ida said, as disappointing as it is that I'm the villain, I must work to the fullest to protect the Ada family name. He looked at Bakugo. Bakugo, we must work together to find a way to defeat Midoriya and Uraraka. The explosive teen ignored him as he walked toward the building causing Ada to sigh saying, this will be harder than I expected. On the hero's team, Izuku stood with Uraraka after All Might briefed them on what to do. The girl asked him, Deku, it seems that Bakugo is out to get you. Do you know why? She then tilted her head making her look cute a little. Somewhere Pony felt the need to punt her boyfriend. The hero wannabe looked at her, it's just, I don't know. I think it's because for most of my life I was quirkless, and now that I have a quirk he thinks that I didn't tell him or something because I looked down on him. He thinks that if I breathe the same area as he does that I'm somehow standing in his way of becoming the number one hero. In short, he's an egotistical prick. He saw the girl barely able to contain his laughter as she said, it was so serious and sad. And then suddenly you said that he's just a prick and the situation lost all of its seriousness. She wiped out a tear from her eye as she added, so today is a faded battle between men. Izuku waved his hand telling that it was more or less so. Discord had already told him that he'd have to face Bakugo sooner or later, and from the looks of it, it seems that it is sooner than expected. The boy then began to discuss a plan with Uraraka, though the girl refused that he sent Bakugo into the void of nothingness when they see him. Something about him getting hurt. In the end, both agreed on something and began to wait for their time to begin. Moments later, the horn ran signaling them to act to which Izuku was the first as he carried Achako on his back as he sprouted wings from his shoulder blades and flew toward a window on the second floor. Back with Ida and Bakugo, so what's the plan, Bakugo? The boy looked at him with no interest as he asked, do you think that Deku is somehow strong with that broken quirk of his? The armored ten didn't know where he was going with this, but if that meant that they can finish the exercise, he said, I believe that Midoriya is quite strong given that his quirk can bend the laws of nature to its will, but nothing can't be beaten. That Hugo scoffed, you don't know nothing for eyes, by the time I'm done with him, he'll be nothing but a smoking piece of crap. Inside the building, both Izuku and Achako were navigating through the maze that is the testing area. Izuku looked at Achako as he said, so we know that they have the bomb somewhere on the fourth floor thanks to my floating eye. He recalled an eye he summoned to his palm much to the girl's disgust. We also know that Bakugo is coming straight for me, so I think that the best solution is for you to head to Ieda while I deal with Bakugo. The girl nodded her head, and Izuku suddenly popped an energy shield. Bakugo jumped from the corner yelling, Deku, you cheating fuck. Tell me, how did you get a quirk this strong? The boy across him shrugged, God thought it would be cool to reward me for handling all of your shit for years, I think. If anything the reply made Bakugo angrier. The blonde teen snarled as he said under his breath, Oh Deku, you did it now. I'm going to make a scarf out of your guts. The boy then lunged toward Izuku as he ready to right hook, but the green-haired boy ducked under it as he grabbed the arm, and tossed Bakugo over his shoulder saying, I've literally been studying you for years. You didn't think that I'm going to miss that you use your right arm in a big opening. The blonde teen laid there on the ground growling like a wounded animal. Bakugo then stood up and blasted himself toward Izuku who teleported to the side avoiding Bakugo in his follow-up blast. The boy then sent a concentrated blast of flames at him causing the blonde to roll away from the attack. He then saw Izuku from the corner of his behind all of a sudden as he twirled a capture tape around his wrist. The boy blasted the capture type freeing himself. However, Izuku frowned snapping his fingers as he rewrote reality putting Bakugo inside the capture type of All Might said, Young Bakugo has been captured. Ten minutes are left. Bakugo stood there stunned that the nerd managed to beat him. He can vaguely hear Izuku talking to the brown-haired girl, Yuraka, I'm done with Bakugo. How are things on your end? The girl replied through the line saying, I'm fine. I found the room of the bomb, but I didn't enter it yet. Do you want me to wait for you? Izuku checked his choices as he came to a decision, please stay outside the room, till I reach it. The girl gave him an affirmative. In the watching room, Kirishima stood there disappointed, damn it, I thought there was going to be an awesome fight between Bakugo and Midoriya, but in the end, Midoriya managed to slip the type on Bakugo's hand. Not really, everyone turned to Shoto wondering what he was talking about, no one noticed, but I did. In the beginning, Bakugo managed to dodge the attack, but suddenly he found himself inside the capture tape. I think that Midoriya simply rewrote reality making it so that Bakugo got in the tape. The boy tapped his chin saying, I have to admit it is a smart strategy against low-case villains, but I doubt he'd be able to do it with strong villains. He must have some limits to his power. No one is invincible after all. Hiroshima then said, what? He rewrote reality to catch Bakugo. That's not cool man. He should have fought him like a man. This is not manly at all. All Might then interjected, Young Kirishima, while it's true that some may see it as a coward's way to settle things, however as heroes we must limit the damage as much as possible. We can't always have flashy fights especially if they're hostages, got it. 
The boy nodded his head. Momo then added, It seems Midori also knew that Bakugo would go looking for him, even though he managed to dodge his attacks skillfully. This means that he planned this from the get-go. I must admit that he really saved time by not engaging Bakugo in combat, and just captured him immediately. Back in the building, Izuku was slithering on the walls like a python snake. He appeared beyond Uraraka as he hissed, Uraraka, I'm here. The girl squeaked in fear as she saw him, but then composed herself as she remembered who she was talking to. The girl pouted as she said, Deku-kun, you almost gave me a heart attack. Next time, come as a cute little cat, dog, or something not a freaking python. The boy laughed as he turned back nodding his head. He then looked at Achako seriously, so he's in there. The girl nodded her head as Izuku told her to be quiet. He then turned intangible as well as invisible poking his head inside the room where he saw Ida doing something so ridiculous that he almost laughed blowing away his cover. The speed teen was standing there monologuing to himself, I'm the villain of this exercise. I feel so bad, but I can't fail because I'm an Ida and we rise to the occasion, so I won't shame my family's name, so today to become a hero, I will embrace villainy. He then let out a dramatic laugh as he said, look at me, I'm incarnate of evil itself. Izuku pulled his head back quickly as he controlled his laughing making Achako look at him with confusion, but he put his hand on her forehead and shared his memory with her. The girl had to put her hand on her mouth to not give out their location. The boy then straightened himself as he said, as entertaining as that was, I have a plan that just might work to our advantage. He then summoned something from midair and handed it to Uraraka, you will use your quirk to make you float while I distract Ada by talking to him, while you pour this on the ground. Once he's stuck we'll go bagging and tagging him, and then we'll catch the weapon. Achako looked at the item, and saw it was glue, glue. Are you sure Deku-kun? I mean won't we be caught in it too? The boy shook his head pointing to the label of the glue, and when Achako saw it, she almost laughed at how funny the idea was, Deku, you sure are a riot. Izuku entered the room as he looked at Ada, Ada, give up. The room is surrounded, and heroes are on their way. Give up the bomb, and I promise you for the sake of our old friendship before you turn to villainy that I'll make sure that you're rehabilitated back into society. He discreetly heard Discord say in his mind, you're taking this way too seriously. Ada looked at him, and turned using the most ridiculous villainous voice, Midoriya, my dear old friend, have you come to see the destruction of the world? While you might honor our old friendship, I don't since I'm a villain, so I'll make sure to destroy you piece by piece. The armored teen didn't notice the glue that was pooling beside him courtesy of a floating Achako. Izuku then said, let's fight then. Ada then began to move, but suddenly felt stuck to the ground. He looked at Izuku demanding an answer, what did you do, hero? What kind of trick is this? Izuku shrugged as he said, nothing much really. It's only glue to keep you from going anywhere. He then walked to him and said, now hold still while you're Raka and I put our capture tape on you. The villain action was now shocked that he was caught off guard like this, but smiled saying, you want to come here. Fools you'll be stuck just like I am, and then the bomb we go off killing everyone and everything that you love and care about. The words fell from his mouth as he saw Izuku stand in front of him on the glue, and move beside tying his hands before looking at Achako and saying, let's get the bomb, shall we? Achako nodded as they both walked to the bomb touching it before their victory was declared. Head aside in defeat as he asked, can you get me out of here? Izuku only snapped his fingers, and the boy was free. He then asked, what kind of glue did you use? Achako managed to hold back her laughter as she threw him something. He looked at it and his eyes widened. The bottle literally said, eat a glue made for catching all Ida family members from all generations. He looked at Izuku and deadpanned, you made a glue just to catch me. The boy nodded, as Ida said, I don't know if I have to feel insulted or flattered, to be honest. Izuku shrugged his shoulders. They began to walk, but the sound of the door opening caught their attention. They then saw Bakugo who looked in a daze. Ida walked up to him and said, Bakugo, good thing you're here. We can now all leave together given that the match is over. Bakugo responded by shoving him aside. He looked at Izuku and lifted the gauntlet on his weapon as he pulled the pin saying, die. A huge explosion then erupted making its way toward Izuku who managed to open a portal to the outside avoiding the blast. He then turned his arms into crab hands and grabbed Bakugo as he yelled at him, are you insane? You could have killed me. The boy yelled back angrily, that's because you're always standing in my way, Deku. Izuku sighed shaking his head as he then smashed Bakugo's head against the walls to avoid any other mishaps. The three then walked outside the building as Bakugo was on a stretcher that came to take him after he was knocked out. Once the three reached the observation room, the others stared at them in silence, but All Might decided to keep the show moving. The hero coughed, all right, that was an eventful match. Now, we all saw both sides work to their fullest to entertain victory, but in the end, one person can be the MVP of this exercise, so who will it be? The hero finished with his trademark smile as he looked at his pupils who began to discuss the position of the MVP among themselves. Finally, Momo spoke, I agree I speak for all of us when I say that Midoriya is the MVP of the match. Bakugo was too focused on settling some kind of grudge fight with Midoriya so he didn't notice Midoriya capturing him. Ida was too focused on staying in character when confronting Midoriya, let his guard down, and finally Uraraka while doing everything correctly, was only following orders not giving her own ideas. Midoriya pulled off plans and fought off the villain capturing them and securing the weapon at the end. 
everyone looked at her shocked at her explanation as the blonde hero mentally said, no wonder she's a recommendation student. He then coughed into his fist, that true young Yeyurazu. I wouldn't have said any better myself. Now let's move on to the next match between teams J and B. He pointed his finger at the villain's team saying, villain's team to your position. Both Ajiro and Toru walked to the building excited to begin their match. In the building, Toru stripped from her gloves and shoes as she said, okay, I'm going now. Wish best. Outside the building, the hero team stood as Shoji formed ears on his arms to pinpoint the location of the villain team. Once he was done, he told his partner, they're on the fifth floor of the building. He then asked Shoto, so how are you planning to do this? Shoto looked at him before saying, step outside the building or you'll get hurt. The huge team moved outside the building as the smaller one put his hands on the wall, and with that, the entire building was covered with ice. Back with the villain's team, they were both stuck to the ground with ice around their legs, and they couldn't move. They then heard footsteps as Shoto entered the room. He looked at them and said, don't feel bad about it, but it's just that we both play on different levels. The tailed boy tried to move from the ice, but Shoto added, I don't think that this small match is worth ripping your feet for. The team kept moving forward as he put his hand on the bomb signaling the end of the fight. He then heated the building melting the ice and freeing the two students. In the end, it was decided that Shoto was the MVP for finishing the fight quickly with the least amount of injuries, and at no time at all. Though Izuku disagreed saying that Shoto's method in real life situations will cause hindrance to his teammates if they were sensitive for cold weather. The next match was between Team C and Team G the villains who were Momo and Minda opted to set traps all over the building. To be more accurate Momo set the traps while the small grey paired team decided to keep leering at her at every inch of the fight. The building after 5 minutes was full of booby traps on both the 3rd and 4th floors, while Momo decided to act smart and hide the weapon on the rooftop after wielding the door shut. Their plan fell quickly however when Kayoka and Denki came. The electric blonde used the metal of some of the traps to cause a small amount of electricity to surge through the others causing the traps to fail. The two then walked up to the 5th floor where the pair was hiding, and the earphone jack girl punched through Momo's setup barriers. She quickly took out Minda, while she struggled with Momo, but an earphone jack to the ear managed to catch the rich girl off guard enough for the girl to capture her. Eventually, they managed to find the bomb and win the exercise. In the end, Kayoguka was declared as MVP of this match. The next fight was between Teams H and I. The teams quickly went to their locations, but the fight ended before it even started. The hero's team forfeited when Mina accidentally slipped acid on Ayama's cape which caused him to refuse to work with her. In the end there was no MVP since there was no match to speak of. The next fight was between teams F and Isiro and Kirishima worked together perfectly as villains whereas Kirishima acted like a wrecking ball, Siro was the operator. The tape team hanged the weapon off the floor, but in the end the combined efforts of Takoyami and Asui the heroes won. In the end, Asui was declared MVP. All Might now stood in front of the class of the young heroes as he said, Today young heroes, you learned how to fight like true heroes, and got a taste of how the real world of heroics work. But now you will have the most important lesson of all. Everyone looked at him with interest or awe, dot 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 how to make a heroic exit. The hero then disappeared into the distance as he ran away with Izuku and Kirishima cheering him on, while Kayoka just sighed at her mentor's silly antics, but even she found him to be a bit amusing at times. After that, the students went back to the changing rooms to get out of their hero costumes. Later that day, the students were lounging in the dorm's common room, when the door of their building was opened to reveal a tired pony. She walked up to her boyfriend who was on the couch before flopping onto him. The boy chuckled as he asked her, first heroic lesson. The girl nodded as she hugged him saying, I got stuck with Captain Blade Arm. He didn't let me do anything except tell me to sit tight and watch the bomb. The boy scratched his head as he tried to remember someone that fit the description. He then asked, do you mean Kamakiri? The girl nodded, and the boy patted her back saying, don't worry pony, I'm sure you're showing off your skills later on. You're strong and you know it. The girl nuzzled her face into his chest as she hugged him happily while several people around him blushed at the display of affection. Though one was angry, Minta then jumped on Izuku's head saying, I want a hug from a girl hot like Tsunotori. Izuku then snapped his fingers turning the boy into a 2D paper. The 2D Minda smirked saying, now I can see the girl's panties. His vision was then blocked by something slimy as he heard Izuku say, those are huge slugs. Have fun with them, they have a highly stinging acid that comes off their slime. Mina then began to scream in pain as Izuku and Pony left the building. As they were walking, Pony asked Izuku something, Izuku, you said your powers can help you do anything, right? The boy nodded not knowing what this was about, but he was taken aback by the girl's next phrase, can you turn me into a real pony like the ones from Discord's home world? Both mentor and mentee looked at her shocked as they said a single, huh. The girl explained, you know I'm half horse half human, but I always wanted to see how it feels to be a real pony. The boy was about to refuse, but smirked as he said, as you wish my princess. The boy snapped his fingers as pony transformed into a real pony. The horse in front of him had blonde hair all over her body, the same Russian blue eyes and the same ivory horns on her head. The boy then said, let's go to your dorms. The girl nodded as she said, I can't wait for everyone to see me. The two walked till they finally reached the 1B dorm. The boy opened the door and entered with Pony following him. 
Setsuna was the first to greet them, but she froze when she saw the horse and was able to connect the dots as she fell over laughing. Everyone came to see what happened as they saw Midoriya with the pony walking beside him till Ibarra asked, Midoriya, who is that? She pointed to Pony. You already know her, he replied. Everyone stood silent for a moment as they allowed his words to sink in. Suddenly a couple of students bursted into laughter while Yui went and began patting her. Izuku felt a malicious aura around him. He looked around to see an unamused Kendo looking at him with a strained smile, how long will she stay like this? The boy lifted six fingers making her slump as she said in a depressed voice, Come on Midoriya, I already have nineteen babies and one overgrown one to look after, why do you have to make my job harder? The boy laughed as he patted her back. Everyone then asked Pony questions to which she happily answered, and in six hours she was back to normal much to her annoyance. A new day for chaos. Izuku woke up for another day of fun with his classmates, but couldn't help but shudder at a very weird dream he had. He'll just have to ask Discord about it when he has free time. He exited his room walked to the kitchen to grab a cup of water to drink and was met by Momo, Good morning, Yeirazu. I hope you had a good night's sleep yesterday. The girl in question smiled, I had a very good night, thanks for your concern. I hope you too had a good night's sleep. The boy nodded his head before grabbing a cup and filling it with water. He looked at the girl, what do you think Sensei will put us through today? The girl chuckled at the choice of wording, I believe that he will most likely review the trail battles from yesterday and give us some feedback on how to increase the efficiency of our performance. The boy nodded his head as Momo asked, now I have to ask you something, why do you have so much fun picking on poor Itsuka? She called me yesterday complaining about you making Pony into a horse and bringing her over to the dorms. The boy gasped indignantly, I don't pick on her. I just like to have fun with her, plus her reactions are really funny. He then noticed her eyes sparkling, why are your eyes sparkling? The girl showed a picture of Pony as a horse saying, cute. The boy's sweat dropped at how his classmates' behavior changed at a drop of a hat. He then walked to his room to get ready for another day, but the dream he had was still weighing on his mind. So he snapped his fingers making Discord appear, the being was still in his bed so Izuku summoned an alarm and activated it. This caused Discord and Takoyami to be awakened. Discord looked at his hand clock and said, it's way too early. I want to sleep some more. Izuku smacked him, I need to ask you some questions that have been bothering me. The chaos being sighed and waved his hand, I had a very weird dream yesterday, but I can't seem to put my finger on it. Discord raised an eyebrow as he scratched his head. He finally spoke, well, for the record, this was precognition, though since you're still a beginner to some extent, so most of them will be fuzzy and unclear. This caused Izuku to blink as Discord looked at him, when I didn't tell you about precognition. My bad. Izuku shook his head, no, I'm shocked about precognition, but I thought said that I was a good chaos user. He was flicked in the forehead. Calm down, little one. Discord said, but you didn't honestly think that you are master level now, did you? When I said we can move to a new form of training, it was because I deemed you good enough. Izuku nodded his head as he went into his room to change his clothes into his uniform. After breakfast, Izuku went to their homeroom to begin the day. He picked Pony on his way, and he was shocked to see a flock of reporters blocking the entrance of the school. He looked to his side and saw that his girlfriend was beginning to get a bit unnerved, so he growled like a beast causing all of the reporters to back off as he and other students entered the school. The boy then made his way to his class and entered it. All of the students were chatting casually as Izuku said, Aizawa sensei is coming. Get ready. The nighttime hero rolled into the room in his sleeping bag as he eyed his students, I have to say that you're very rational students. Every time I come here, you're quiet and silent. The student's sweat dropped wondering if he knew that Aizawa knew that Izuku was warning. Sure, Midori is the reason, but that's good enough for me. The hero unzipped from his sleeping bag as he walked onto the teacher's desk. The hero looked at some papers he had. Today, I'll be giving a review on today's battle trail. He looked at Bakugo. Bakugo, you have talent, so stop acting like a baby throwing a tantrum. The boy growled but nodded his head. The hero turned to Midoriya. Midoriya, you have a lot of power through your fingertips. You could have ended the fight with Bakugo earlier, but you decided to toy with him. Next time, don't. In real life situations, people die while you're having your fun. The boy had the decency to blush. Aizawa continued his briefing till he finally landed on Todoroki. Todoroki, next time, try to work with your teammate. A hero can't do it alone, even I need to work with people sometimes. Add to that, next time don't bury the building in ice, since there can be civilians or hostages. The boy nodded even though his exterior made him look like he didn't care too much. The class continued as usual till the end when Aizawa stood up and said, Now, we'll do something that will affect your lives till the end. Everyone paled wondering what their teacher was cooking up till the nighttime hero said, You're all going to elect class representatives. The room quickly erupted into chaos as everyone was demanding to become one, but Ida then jumped and yelled, Silence, this grabbed everyone's attention as the boy carried on. Now that I have your attention I have a preposition that will satisfy everyone. I say that we vote for the person that we think can carry the position. Suyu raised her hand asking, How do you know that we won't vote for ourselves? Plus, we just met each other, so how do we know who is up for it? Ida nodded his head, you just vote for the person that you see most fit. He then looked at Aizawa asking, is that a valid method sensei? The hero groaned, I don't care. 
Just be over with it before my nap was over. Momo made a box, papers, and some pens distributing them to everyone. Five minutes later, the vote was over as Momo counted the votes. It was a landslide for Izuku who won 11 votes while Momo won 2 votes. The others were either 1 or 0 votes. Izuku looked at the result as he blinked. Oh wow, I have to say that I didn't expect this. Momo stood beside him saying, I don't think that you should be this shocked given that most people see you as the strongest in the class. It's only natural that they vote for you. The boy leaned over to her, really. That seems a little bit shallow. The girl completed his sentence. Yes, I believe so, but you were still chosen. The girl then went to give a speech thanking those who voted for her, and Izuku could tell it was both Jiro and Todoroki for some reason. The boy then began to scan his classmates' thoughts to see why who voted for him actually voted and to say that he was disappointed would be an understatement. Most of those who voted for him were for shallow reasons like Momo said, and the only one who believed in his ability was Achako and Ida which was flattering. But he did find out something interesting and decided to deal with the issue at the right moment. He then looked at Tenya who he heard say in his mind in real life, I have only one vote. That's better than I expected. At that moment, Izuku decided that he will find a way to make the boy the new class representative of class 1A. The boy began to wonder why Bakugo didn't shout at him only to see a muzzle on his mouth that Izuku put on. But no one other than himself can see it, right? The moment the votes were being counted I muzzled him so he won't start yelling left and right. The boy removed the muzzle as Bakugo looked at him with a murderous glare to which Izuku looked at him with Medusa's eyes causing him to become a statue and make the class laugh as the bell rang. Everyone filtered out as Bakugo was still in stone, but he was then freed as he yelled, DKU, you, you bitch. The hero students made their way to the cafeteria. Izuku sat at his regular table with Achako, Ida, Momo, and Jairo as he waited for Pony to come. The boy looked at Achako and said, Thank you for believing in me, Uraka. It means a lot to me that you didn't vote for me just because of my powers or because you think that I quote hot end quote. He looked at Ida and thanked him as well. Uraka blushed as she said, It was no problem. You seemed most fit to take the position. In addition, I think you'd lead the class perfectly given your skills and fun attitude. She said as she remembered how they trapped Ida. She chuckled, Ida Glue, I can't help but laugh every time I remember it. Ida interjected, oh yes, I believe that Midoriya would be a perfect fit for the role of the class representative, that's why I voted for him. The boy looked at Achako who beamed at Ida, really, I thought you'd want to be the class representative, Ida. Given how you seem to fit the role with the glasses and everything. Everyone sweat dropped at her explanation of things but didn't say anything. Ada said, well, wanting something is different than being fit for it. Achako began to scratch the back of her head as she looked at the boy, you know Ada, I've been thinking about something. The boy looked at her as she beamed, admit Ada, you're filthy rich. Everyone was taken aback by how the girl casually talked about this, but Ada only chuckled much to everyone's surprise as he said, I guess there's no hiding it anymore. It's true, I'm a younger brother of Ingenium. I mean it's quite obvious if you think about it. Izuku stated the obvious as Momo added, he's right. I mean the costume was a dead giveaway when you look at it objectively. Discord appeared on his head as he said, I find it hard to believe that he's related to Ingenium. The two couldn't be further apart, one is fun while the other is well a. Eh? Izuku swatted him away as he said, don't mind him. Ida could only laugh, nonsense, my brother has always told me that I need to loosen up a little bit. Izuku smiled, but then his entire world turned black so he asked, hey, who turned off the lights? This was met by a chuckle from behind him as Pony sat on his lap and said, how was your day so far? The boy smiled as he kissed her, fine, and it just got better. He was interrupted by a cough from Ida who said, while I feel happy that you're both in a happy relationship, I feel inclined to inform you not to show PDA in public. The two looked and saw the blushing forms of Momo, Kayuka, and Achako. Both chuckled a little as Kendo approached them. The girl greeted everyone till she reached Izuku when she said, hello, baby number 20 that I have to be wary of. The boy laughed, hey, Kendo, are you still mad about the shaving cream that I left in your coffee this morning? or waking up in the morning only to find yourself in the middle of the ocean. The girl flinched as she remembered fighting off a shark as she said, no, don't have the slightest clue of what you're talking about. She shook her head amused at her relationship with the boy, they seemed like an older brother who liked to tease his younger sister, so I was voted class representative. Who's yours? Everyone went quiet as Izuku said in a very amused voice, this is going to be a beautiful partnership. At that moment, Itsuka slumped feeling her soul leave her body as she said, why god why? The boy talked with her telepathically, calm down, will you? I going to quit anyway. I don't want the position. I'm thinking of giving it to Ida. The girl breathed a sigh of relief as Izuku added, but I can stay if you want me to. The girl shouted in her head which Izuku understood loud and clear as a definite no. They continued talking, but Pony then noticed Izuku's own off for a bit. Zuzu, is there something on your mind? Pony asked as she nudged her boyfriend a little which startled him back into reality. The boy chuckled a little as he said, not really, but I had this weird dream yesterday and I just can't put my finger on it. Discord told me that it is mostly precognition which means some future events, but I can't just seem to decipher them. Momo's eyes sparkled as she made a pen and a notebook with Kendo sweat dropping as she threw away Monoma, let's talk about them. Maybe we can both reach a logical conclusion. 
Discord appeared. Are you sure that logic is the word you're looking for? Because when chaos is involved, logic becomes a relic of the past. The being then went and began to chat with Dark Shadow, but Izuku brought him back using a fishing hook he made out of thin air. Momo couldn't help but find herself agreeing with Discord given that Midoriya's quirk is directly related to chaos, but at the same time she thought, I won't lose anything if I tried. She stopped for a moment before adding, Midoriya is also stealing my thing. The girl shook those thoughts away as she asked the boy, what happened in your dream, Midoriya? The boy rubbed his neck as he began to explain, well, it began a normal dream with me and Pony having a date on the beach, but suddenly everything began to crumble and twitch kinda like static with TV. Suddenly multiple disasters were happening from earthquakes to rainfall to fire to floods. I think you get the point till now. All of a sudden everything is covered by a black mist with a yellow glow in the center. Everything then shifts and I see Aizawa Sensei fighting a bird. Hendo chuckles, I think you might have absorbed too much chaos so that's why you had this dream. Izuku carries on, the bird is the size of all might, and it was talking to a red pound, but after that, I woke up. Momo blinks as she tries to make sense of this dream that her classmate had, but suddenly the alarms went off. Hashtag alarm level 3. Please, everyone, evacuate in orderly fashion hash. Murmurs and shouts began to fill the cafeteria as Momo asked an upperclassman what the alarm meant, and he panicked saying, that means someone managed to break inside the school. This caused the entire place to fall into chaos as everyone was trying to flee for their own lives. Izuku was pushed away from his friends as he yelled, have some dignity, will you? He was slammed into the window as he looked outside and saw the press being escorted by present Mike. He was about to yell and tell everyone to quit being huge babies, but Ada beat him to the punch as he was slammed into the exit sign and informed the people of what he found. This made Izuku smile as he said, that solved half of my problems. Now to the other half. Out by the front of the gate, Nezu, Power Loader, Aizawa, and present Mike stood there looking over the remains of a wall that was crumbling to dust causing the initial media break into the school. Aizawa looked at them and asked Power Loader, what do you think? Explosion or what? The helmet-wearing hero replied, no, this isn't something I've seen. It was like the wall was evaporated from existence. This made Aizawa lift an eyebrow. Mike then asked, so what is this some type of publicity stunt? Nezu shook his head, no, this is a war declaration against us in UA. After that, Izuku stepped down from the position of the class representative and gave it to Ida, though he did hear Momo complain that she had two votes. He chuckled thinking that he maybe should have talked this over with the girl, but decided against it since what was done was already done. The rest of the day was pretty normal as Izuku did homework. He trained his powers a bit before hanging with his friends and then hanging in 1B with Pony with the bonus of making Kendo's hair in flames before the girl replied with a prank of her own dumping him in an ice-cold bath. His day was normal, but he still couldn't remove that sense of foreboding that he had. The next day, everyone was chatting as normal and they all went quiet as Aizawa entered the room and said, Today, we in Class 1B have a special type of training with two secret teachers. The man then lifted a ball that said rescue training. The entire class erupted into cheers, but Aizawa silenced them using his quirk. He then carried on, in addition to that, you can wear your hero costume or gym uniform. I don't care what you choose. He walked to the door and looked at Izuku. By the way, Midoriya, the boy looked at him, Nezu wants to talk with you. Don't worry with your scope of abilities, you'll be able to catch up in no time. He then motioned for everyone to get moving to the changing rooms. The boy walked to the principal's office and entered as he met Nezu in a shrunken all might. The boy bowed greeting them, good morning, Principal Nezu. He turned to his idol, good morning, mini might. The hero didn't know if he had to chuckle or groan in embarrassment. The boy looked at him and said, you know I can always heal you. I don't why you refuse me to do so. The hero shrugged and Izuku replied, at least, don't over it during your time limit. Nezu said from the side, you try convincing him that. He thinks that since he's the symbol of peace that no one is capable of doing hero work, and that he needs to step and help in every little thing that he lays his eyes across forgetting his duties as a teacher and a mentor to young Gyro. The blonde hero sighed as he was being berated by two people who were astronomically smarter than him, and he can only sit there and take it because he deserved it. Discord appeared on his shoulder as he murmured, this might take a while. Outside of the school, the students of both classes were out waiting for the buses to come and take them to the testing area. With 1A, Hida was discussing what he called a seating plan with Yayurazu for most seating efficiency while the only thing that the girl thought about was, should I tell Ida that there's no such thing as seating efficiency? I hate to burst his bubble though. The girl was then saved by Itsuka who walked up to them and she waved her hand at them, good morning, Ida. She looked at Momo and added, good morning, yeah Momo. The rich girl blushed as her nickname made its way to the other class as well. The rich girl smiled, good morning, Kendo. I hope Midoriya didn't bug you too much this morning. The orange-haired girl waved her hands as she said, Nothing that I can't handle, only two dog-sized spiders. The effect was immediate as Momo jumped away with an eep-making kendo chuckle. Momo replied, How are taking this so casually? The orange-haired girl shrugged, Actually, they're kind of cute and friendly. I kept them and named them Spike and Mike. I used their webs to hatch a revenge plan on him. 
Momo could only sweat drop as the big sister of 1B was driven into her classmates' prank war. I think Midoriya wanted a constant source of chaos on regular basis, so he began to mess with Kendo whose pride wouldn't allow her to take a hit and just lay down. Good thinking on his end, very clever way I suppose. The girl was knocked out of her thoughts as Kendo asked what she was thinking about to which the rich girl replied, nothing much. I just was wondering why Principal Nezu wanted to see Midoriya. Kendo shivered as she remembered something, didn't he once say that he was his personal student or something? A chill traveled through everyone's spine as Ida shook his head when he saw the buses arrive. Both class representatives went to the buses to start loading up. The boy grabbed a whistle and began to blow in it ordering the students to enter the buses in an orderly fashion. Kendo took one look inside the bus and said, Ida, they're not the type of bus you're thinking about. The boy looked inside as he clenched his fist and said, I made a mistake. Momo patted him on the back, maybe next time Ida, maybe next time. The two classes entered the buses. Inside the bus carrying 1A, Tsuyu looked at Bakugo and said, Bakugo, I usually tend to say what's on my mind, so do you mind answering a few questions? The boy with an ever-permanent scowl on his face said, What the fuck do you want, Froggy? The girl replied, Call me, Tsu. She then remembered what she wanted to say, Midoriya seems to have a very weird quirk. Do you know what his parents' quirks are? Bakugo could just have yelled at her to shut up and never bother him again, but he knew that the extras will still crowd in with questions about what shitty Deku's parent quirks are. So he answered her through gritted teeth, his mom's quirk is some type of attraction quirk, and his father can breathe fire. He looked at them, are you happy now? Tsuyu tilted her head, but that doesn't make sense. Midoriya's quirk is close to a reality-altering quirk, while his parents' quirks are regular everyday quirks. It seems a little far-fetched. Are you sure that he isn't adopted or something? This made the boy finally lose his cool as he screamed into the bus, what the hell do I look like to you? His personal assistant. If you want to know if he's adopted or not, go ask Auntie and Co. The girl blinked a little before she shrugged saying, okay, give me her number so I can talk with her. The boy blinked before yelling, like hell, I would, leave her alone, frog face. The frog girl croaked, but you're the one who told me to go talk to her if I wanted to learn more about his quirk. You're a really complicated guy Bakugo. The entire bus erupted into laughter as Bakugo was angry and his face seemed like a boiling lobster. Momo said, well anyway, she interrupted before Bakugo blew up the bus, I find it quite intriguing that Midoriya's quirk was a very large mutation from his parents. I mean I heard some quirks mutate together, but to this extent, it's unheard of. Kirishima popped from behind saying, well, I think his quirk is really manly, and the way he uses it is really awesome, and he'll be able to make it big given it really flashy just Bakugo and Todoroki, unlike my plain hardening. Momo smiled as she said to Kirishima, Don't sell yourself short, Kirishima. A quirk doesn't make the hero. I think you'd make a wonderful hero. You made it this far, so you can't let negative thoughts consume you. The boy smiled in her direction and thanked her. Suyu then said, But I doubt Bakugo would be able to make high given how angry and volatile his personality is. I don't think he can make it to the 50s let alone, the 10s. The boy jumped up and yelled, What the fuck did you say, Froggy? Do you want to be buried today? This only seemed to prove her point as she pointed at him and said, See what I mean. Kaminari said, well, I have to agree with her. I mean we've only met you for a few days, and you've already proven that your personality is a mixture of sewage turd mixed with garbage being burned for three days without stop. This made everyone laugh. Bakugo looked at him as a murderous aura engulfed him as he said, hey, Sparky do you want to die today? And what's the new vocabulary? Before anything can happen, Aizawa spoke, be quiet. We'll arrive there in three minutes, so prepare yourself. Meanwhile, in the bus carrying 1B, Pony sat wondering what Nezu might want from her boyfriend, and she had a bad feeling ever since Vlad King told them that they have hero training today. It was like her animal instinct telling her that something bad was about to go down. Pony was brought out of her head as Ibarra asked her, Is there something on your mind, Pony? The vine girl looked at her friend with worry in her eyes as the horse girl chuckled a little saying, No nothing serious, but I have a bad feeling about today. Maybe I didn't get enough sleep. Itsuka said from the side, are you still thinking about what Midoriya said yesterday? I honestly think he's overselling it. It was just a bad dream. The horse girl laughed, I think I may have thought about it, but he seemed so serious, and I have never seen him like that before. Everyone hummed. A waste then said, can we talk about how awesome the dude is? His pranks on Kendo are epic. I mean waking up in the ocean. Giant spiders. That's really cool. He was whacked by an unimpressed Kendo who said, how about I tell him to prank you instead? The boy chuckled, no thanks, I already have Kaibara pranking me. I don't need another one who can simply make sink into the toilet with a flick of his fingers. Pony was currently laughing as she said, Honestly Itsuka, you're giving him way too much power. I think he picked you to have a fresh source of chaos always at the ready. He also chose someone who might reply, but he won't be dangerous. Kendo blinked as wheels turned in her mind, so he picked me to prank, because he thinks I'm easy pickings, ha. Huh. A dark aura encompassed her, I'll show him what this easy picking can do when she's angry. Pony sweat dropped, I treated to make it better only to make it worse. Um, I have a feeling that I may have helped him prank her harder. She was brought out of her thoughts as the bus stopped, and Vlad said, Alright kids, we're here. Both classes exited the buses and they walked toward a building with a huge dome. 
Aizawa said, Welcome to the place where you'll be doing the rescue training. This is the USJ. This caused Ishido, Kaminari, Minta, Tsuburaba, Awase, and Manga to yell at the same time, is the Universal Studio Japan. Their hopes were down midair as Aizawa said, No, it's an unforeseen stimulation joint. The six teens went down as they were all escorted to the building. Once they entered it, a figure walked toward them as she said, Today, we'll be doing disaster training. The figure was wearing a puffy spacesuit with a visor that showed white narrowed eyes. It was the Space Hero, 13. This caused two squeaks as Achako and Yui from 1B began to fangirl over the Space Hero. This made the hero smile as she patted both girls telling them that she was going to be there all day so they can ask her as many questions as she wanted. The hero then carried on to tell the students about the dangers of quirks and how they could be used to hurt others. She explained that today they'll be learning to test their quirks to rescue stimulation. The hero said, Today, you'll be doing rescue training in different scenarios. They walked forward where they saw different areas from zones from fire, to flood, to wine storms, earthquakes, and many more. This however caused a chill to travel through Momo's spine as she said to Achako, didn't Midoriya say that he saw different disaster areas in his dream? The mocha-faced girl remembered that as she swallowed heavily saying, yeah, but he also said there was a black mist, so we're good. On the side, Aizawa with Vlad asked 13, so where's All Might? The space hero replied by lifting three fingers as she said, he overdid it with his hero work. Right now, he's resting while both Nezu and Midori are chewing him out for overdoing it. This was the last update recovery girl told me. Aizawa face bombed. This man is the height of irrationality if he needs a student to chew him out to start taking his job seriously. He raffled his hair as he said, whatever, let's get this show on the road and be over with it. The hero walked forward as he heard one of his students whisper, is that a black mist down there? The hero swirled around and looked at the center of the plaza as he saw a black mist swirling at the center as a hand made its way through. A man covered with hands on his body made his way through the mist followed by an army of villains. Kirishima then said, Are those fake villains? Tetsu Tetsu carried on, Yue, is really awesome. The man covered in hands said, We are the League of Villains. The mist finally shrunk as it returned to his side when a huge monster exited it and took a more humanoid form, and I'm Tamira Shigaraki. We're here to kill All Might. Where is he? I don't see him here. Both hero teachers yelled, Get back. This worried both classes as they backed away while Aizawa said, Those are really villains. I want all of you students to fall back so no one gets hurt. He looked at 13 and told her, Keep the students safe and try to contact the school. He then jumped into the fight as Vlad joined him. Some of the villains tried to shoot him with their quirks, but it yielded no result. Aizawa used his scarf to grab some of the villains and smash them into each other. One of the villains which had four arms charged at him, tried to erase my mutant quirk. The man didn't make it too far as Vlad King smashed his face with a hammer made out of blood. The hero charged at the rest as he began smashing left and right. A villain tried to jump on him, but he was grabbed by the throat and thrown to the side like a ragdoll. Suddenly Aizawa blinked which caused the mist villain to escape causing Aizawa to click his tongue as he continued to fight the horde of villains with Vlad. Back with the students, everyone ran to the front door after they tried to connect to the school, but couldn't reach them which tipped them off that the villains might have someone that was jamming their communications. The hero students were almost at the door when the mist from earlier appeared. It narrowed its two yellow eyes at them as it spoke, please excuse our interruption, but we're the League of Villains. We came here to kill All Might, but it appears he's not here, so how about we kill some of the golden eggs? Thirteen raised her hand, yeah, I don't think so. I won't allow a finger to be laid on the students' heads. She activated her quirk only to see four bodies throw themselves at the mist causing her to withdraw. That Hugo, Kirishima, Kamakiri, and Tetsu Tetsu all attacked the mist villain interrupting the hero's attack. Bakugo stood up saying, didn't see that, did you? The boy had a huge smirk on his face which fell almost instantly as the mist villain reformed. The villain said, that was a close one, but now it's time for you all to scatter and die. He then engulfed everyone in a huge dome of mist and began teleporting students to different zones, but some managed to stay at the plaza. They were Achako, Mina, Toru, Sato, and Shoji from 1A, Setsuna, Koji Bondo, Hiru Rin, Kinoko Komori, and Shihai Kirwaro from 1B along with 13. The mist villain looked at them and said, It would appear that I have to kill you myself. Every one of the students took a fighting position as they readied themselves to fend off the villain in front of them. Inside the flood region, Monoma had the nice experience of almost being eaten by a shark-looking villain. He noticed something moving quickly in the water kicking the villain in the head before grabbing him and throwing him onto the boat where he saw Ryaiko Yanagi, Yui Kodai, and Manga Fukudashi from his class. Denki Kaminari and Suyu Asui from class 1 climbed into the boat. The girl then said, I don't think I need to point out the obvious, but we need to come up with a plan to escape from the villains. Monoma scoffed but earned a slap from Ryaiko who said, Indeed, we must find a way to escape. In the fire region, Naranjinki Shota was not having the life of his time with his classmates Ibarra Shrizaki and Jiro to Shishida who was currently moping the floor with the villains with Ajiro and Hantasiro from Class 1A. The teen joined the fry as he tried to protect the girl beside him since she was greatly weakened by the fire. He looked around only to see a member of one hiding under some rocks as he begged and pried that he doesn't die. The boy rolled his eyes as he continued fighting. 
In the earthquake zone, the entire place was a frozen mess as everyone present there was watching Shoto wreak havoc against the villains. In that region, Juzo Honuki, Itsuka Kendo, and Tespiraba were frozen still as much as Takoyami and Koda. In the landslide zone, Bakugo along with Tetsu Tetsu, Kirishima, and Kamakiri were making nightmares come true for villains as they plowed through them. And finally, in the mountain zone, Momo, Gyro, and Ida along with Pony, Awase, and Kaibara were surrounded by villains as they prepared themselves to fight. Back at the school, Izuku felt a sudden increase in chaos as he looked out the window which made Nezu ask him, Is there something wrong, young Midoriya? The boy looked at him and pointed in a certain direction, I felt a sudden surge in chaos from that direction. The principal smiled, that's where the USJ is. Your classmates must have started training. That's why you felt this shift. Now, I have some questions I want to talk to you and your mentor about. Izuku snapped his fingers as he summoned a mini discord. He then grabbed him and began to stretch him till he was full size. The quirked animal smiled, but Izuku couldn't help but feel worried so he sent his shadow to the USJ to tell him what was happening. A party at the USJ. The situation at the USJ was a complete disaster. Thirteen looked around and frowned, what did you do to the students, vile villain? The space-themed hero readied himself in case the mist villain decided to do anything to the rest of the students beside him. The mist villain replied calmly, relax, Thirteen. Your students are still here in the USJ, but I scattered them around a little bit. Whether they live or die is up to my allies who are currently hunting them down. He then let out a small chuckle nerving the rest of the students, as for the rest of you, your fate is at my hands. The mist man began to approach them, as Thirteen said lifting his hands, I don't think so, villain. The hero activated his quirk as the lid on her fingers allowed the mist to be sucked in. The villain groaned as he was being destroyed, but suddenly a portal opened behind the hero as she was slowly eaten by her quirk. This led the students to panic and rush to their fallen teacher. Achako lifted her as her eyes teared up and she says, Thirteen, are you alright? Your quirk was used against you. The girl knew how destructive Thirteen's quirk can be if used improperly. It was one of the many reasons why the heroine chose to be a rescue hero and not a limelight hero given that this way, it would be less dangerous for everyone involved including the villains. The heroine didn't want to kill anyone after all. Thirteen replied through her coughs of pain, I'm fine, but it really hurts. She looked at the mist villain who seems to be currently engaging Shoji with the six-armed boy throwing rocks at him trying to him as he dodges his portals. You all need to find a way out of here. One of you needs to go and warn the administration. Shihai raised his hand, I'll do it. My quirk is best suited for the situation. I can use the shadows to travel quickly to the school. Everyone nodded as they saw Shoji get flung back as Kurajiri approached them. He said, talking about your plan in front of the enemy. How naive can you be? The student stood in front of him defiantly as Shihai had an idea. The boy ran toward him and jumped inside of him. The mist man suddenly felt his own body tug against him. It felt like his body was being stretched. The boy popped out of his body and said, Look at you, so helpless now. He then re-entered it. The mist man frowned then concentrated hard enough and yelled, Get out of my body. Shihai was then launched out in the direction of the door where he hid inside another shadow. The boy then yelled, Open the doors quickly so I can escape to the outside. Tora ran forward and said to the villain, Hi Misty, take a look at this. The girl's body then emitted a huge flash of light causing Kirajiri to back away from the students. In her mind, Tora was mentally patting herself on her back, This is so awesome. I have to thank Midori once we go back to school for teaching me this awesome move. Setsuna disconnected her hands as she grabbed Shoji, Listen, big guy, I'm taking you to the door to pry it open. You're technically our only hope to open it. The girl then noticed a swirling mass of mist coming their way, but suddenly it flinched giving the girl time to get out of the way and take Shoji to the door. The six-armed teen looked at the girl and said, You can count on me. The boy then summoned different arms and grabbed the door as he began to slowly rip it open, or at least cause a crack huge enough for the black user to escape from the USJ. Back with the others, Rin smiled as he said, So you do have a body under all that mist. The boy noticed something glinting in the mist so he aimed at it, and he hit him directly causing him to shriek in pain, and allowing the safe passage of Takage and Shoji. Hirajiri frowned, you may have found my weak point the fight is still far from over, so I suggest that you all give up. The mist man was about to attack when he heard the sound of metal being ripped apart. He looked behind him and saw Shoji standing beside a huge hole in the door. The boy yelled while one of his hands was through the hole, Kuraro, use the shadow of my hand to escape. The black user then jumped from the shadow in the ground to the hand's shadow and exited the USJ. The boy said, don't worry, my friends, help will be swiftly on the way. He then ran outside the USJ. Shoji turned around to see a clearly annoyed Kirajiri who said, You all have been nothing but a nuisance. I will send you all to he. The mist man then felt his body begin to float as he sensed that he lost his footing. Achako said, Looks what Rin said is true. Goodbye now. She threw the mist villain away from the other students toward the ground. She looked at Bondo. Bondo, you have to do it now if we want to contain him. The glue hero in training nodded his head as he walked quickly and used his quirk to glue Kirajiri to the ground. The mist villain tried to escape, but the glue quickly hardened restraining him. Kirajiri growled, damn it. Sato came over and downed a sack of sugar into his mouth. The boy's muscles then bulged as he yelled, and away you go. 
The boy dug his hands into the ground removing a huge chunk that contained Kurajiri and threw the mist man away from the others. Achako and Takage returned to Thirteen who was left with Kanoko. The hero now seemed to be much calmer as she said, Thank you, Komori. That mushroom really helped dull my pain a little bit. The mushroom girl smiled with a small blush, No problem, Thirteen. In the flood region, Monoma sat with his legs crossed as he tried to come up with a plan to use to help him and the others escape. He needed everyone's aid to ensure this endeavor, even 1A's help. Yes, he didn't like him, but even he knew when to act professional or not, this was one of those times to act professional, or else it's an early grave for all of them. The boy looked at everyone and said, All right, as you can see we are all in quite an unexpected situation. I think to survive this we have to combine our strengths to ensure that we all escape from here unharmed or at least without any permanent injuries, so I think the best thing to do right now is to get acquainted with each other's quirks. Everyone looked at him shocked for a moment before Yui picked up a toothpick and enlarged it. The boy was confused, but then the spear-like weapon was near his throat as the girl asked seriously, Who are you and what did you do to Monoma? I know for a fact that he would have never accepted the help of anyone from 1A. The boy chuckled as he was afraid for his life. Kodai, it's really me. I don't want the help of one of scum, but it can't be helped in this situation, so I have to work with what I have right now. The girl lowered her weapon as she silently said, I'm watching you. The boy coughed trying to ignore the chuckles from the others. Well, I'll begin by telling my quirk to those who don't know it yet. It's called copy. It gives me the ability to use copy five quirks at a time for five minutes, but I can only use one at a time. Suyu then said, it's kinda sad. A vein throbbed on the boy's head as the girl said, since I talked, I might as well carry on. My quirk is called frog. It basically allows doing what frogs can do. It's kinda self-explanatory so there's no need to dive into the details. Manga then said, my quirk is called comic. It basically allows me to use comic words such as explosions and whatnot to attack. Yanagi then said, mine is pretty simple, poltergeist. It allows me to use and move things that aren't heavier than the average weight of a human with my mind. So basically a form of telekinesis. Huey then said, size, enlarge or shrink non-living objects. Kaminari then said, my quirk is called electrification. It allows me to emit electricity, but if I overdo it, I kind of free my brain. The blonde then smiled, oh, I have an idea. Everyone looked at him, let me electrocute them, and then we can escape. The boy went to the side of the boat, but Suyu brought him back. Given that you can't direct your energy, I think that you have to refrain for toasting us. Monoma nodded his head as he said, I have a plan. Everyone then heard him out. When he finished, they all felt the boat shake as it was broken in half. Monoma yelled, it's now or never. Suyu then jumped while holding Kaminari and Yui. The black-haired girl threw a couple of screws and blots making the villains laugh. The screws and blots then enlarged. Manga simply released the ord boom from his mouth to fly away. And then the blots began to move and attack the villains as Monoma whose body was disconnected due to having taken Takage's quirk earlier with Ryaiko in her hands as she used her quirk to attack the villains and distract them. A couple of moments later, all the students landed in the water. Monoma said, Quickly, let's move before the villains begin to catch up to us. Then he asked, Can I use my quirk to knock them out? Everyone looked at him with bored expressions while Tsui pointed at the water, and the boy came to a realization, Right, we're all in the water. I might get us too. Suddenly, the doors of the USJ were blown open and everyone sighed in relief thinking a hero came. In the fire zone, Shota ducked under a hit as a villain tried to get through him to attack Shizaki who was tired from the environment at the moment given that the flames were weakening her vines. Shizaki, are you alright? Do you think that you can escape the zone to go somewhere you can work? The girl weakly nodded her head. The fire greatly weakens my body as it zips away my energy same with the cold. But I think this is the worst case scenario for me. The boy nodded his head as he suddenly grabbed the girl and put her on his back. Then we're leaving, and I'm taking you with me. The boy looked at Shishida and the others, guys, Shizaki is tired here. Her quirk and biology are no good in the flame zone and it makes her weaker, so I have to take her out of here. The others nodded as Siro taped a villain and threw him to Ajiro who need him in the face knocking him out. Shishida growled in his beast form, I will not allow anyone to harm my friends. He then grabbed a villain who tried to throw flames at him and slammed him into the ground. Another jumped on his back, but the boy simply threw himself to the ground burying the villain into it. Shota was about to run, but he was stopped by soft sniffling. He looked and saw the grape-themed boy from Wana crying from fear, but he seemed out of it. It then hit him that the boy might be sensitive to heat. Are you alright? Before the boy could answer both of them were attacked by a villain. Shota didn't have time to reply, but Mina had as he threw his sticky balls at the villain before taking a deep breath and said, that was too close for comfort. Go, I'll hold the villains. I may be a coward, but I'm still trying to be a hero. And I'm good. The thing is that if I use my quirk too much, I bleed a little. The boy said as he pointed to a field full of sticky balls where a couple of villains were stuck and trying to escape from it. Shota nodded his head as he continued to run away from the fire zone. As he was about to make it to the exit, he heard a loud boom coming from outside. He could only hope that the heroes came. In the landslide zone, Bakugo yelled, die. The boy blasted a villain in the torso before grabbing his face and punching him. 
He then jumped up and threw an explosion into the faces of three villains. The boy quickly carried on as he grabbed one of the three villains kneeing him in the gut. He then threw the other one into the third as he yelled in anger, What the hell are you doing here, you bunch of weak-ass villains? Tetsu Tetsu was with Kirishima as they both punched villains left and right as the steel user said, Wow, he's sure enjoying himself. He's also a great fighter. I have to give him that. Kirishima chuckled, I know right. He's the manliest guy ever. It's really cool. The boy now had stars in his eyes as he looked at Bakugo. A shout from their said brought both their attentions. They looked at Kamakiri who said, Fanboy ogle him later. We still have villains that need to be taken care of and I doubt that they'd wait for both of you to finish ogling him. Both teens nodded their heads as they returned to their fights and punched the villains left and right, but suddenly a huge boom echoed throughout the USJ. This made both hardening boys smile, the reinforcements must have arrived. In the earthquake zone, the hero students watched in silence as Shoto defeated all the villains in the region. He was slowly walking toward one of the villains and said in a cool, look I'm planning to become a hero, and given the rate that the ice is moving on, I think that you might die from hypothermia, so I need answers. The villain nodded his head from sheer terror wondering if this kid is actually a hero student because he sure didn't seem like one. The villain then began to explain everything about how he was approached by Shigaraki, and how they're planning to defeat All Might using the Namu thing. He then looked at the other hero students and said, come on, let's go. He calmly walked out of the zone as the others silently followed him out when suddenly a huge boom echoed throughout the USJ. Itsuka sighed, the heroes must. The portal opened over her head and water drowned her as she corrected herself when the portal closed, he came, but I'm going to kill him when this is over. She walked ahead of the group as she tried to dry her hair. In the mountain zone, Momo stood as she faced the villains. One of them with iron claws attacked her, but she summoned a shield to defend herself. The iron claws scrapped against the shield. The girl then made an iron bar and smacked the villain against the head knocking him to the ground. The girl rolled away from a villain who tried to hit her, and Gyro attacked him with her earphone jack knocking him unconscious. The girl frowned saying, this is the most unwanted attention anyone can get. The earphone jack user used her boots and blasted away a couple of villains who caught their ears in pain from the extreme pain that they were exposed to. On the other side of the battlefield, Pony was crouched down as she was raining her horns as projectiles took out villains in the truckload, take this, villains. The girl said too happily making Kaibara sweat drop. The boy rotated his leg and kicked a villain in the gut as he's sending him flying away, I think that you're a little bit too happy for this pony. These guys are villains if you don't know already. The girl laughed as she said, I know, but mommy always said that heroes should be smiling when they beat up villains to make them fear us. The grating boy chuckled a little wondering what kind of monster was Pony's mom. A villain then jumped behind Kaibara as he was distracted, but he couldn't do much as Ida came barreling through kicking him in the chest and sending him flying away from the teen. Kaibara, are you alright? The boy nodded his head, yeah, this for the save. I don't know what might have happened if you didn't come through and saved my beacon. The battle continued for a couple more minutes, but finally, it was over. The waste during this time was restraining the villains by fusing them to the ground. I guess that this is a wrap and that our fight is over. We should head back to the entrance. Everyone nodded their head, and suddenly someone popped from the ground grabbing away saying, don't move, or else he gets it. The villain began a monologue about how they should surrender not noticing the horn coming his way, or the shadow that disappeared when he saw him. A loud boom echoed throughout the USJ distracting everyone. Down in the plaza, both Vlad King and Eraserhead were fighting the villains who were trying to gang on them in a desperate attempt to beat them. But it wasn't working as the villains were hoping given that the two heroes were beating them left and right. Currently, Eraser ducked under an energy blast from one of the villains. The hero then jumped activating his quirk and cancelling the villain's power before wrapping his scarf around him and pulling the villain toward him where he was punched and knocked out. The hero then used the villain as a mallet when he smashed him into another villain. Just because you're large in numbers, doesn't mean a couple of low-life scum like you holds a candle to professional heroes, Eraserhead said punching a villain in the gut, before catching another one's hand and throwing it into another. Beside him was Vlad who trapped a villain in his blood before dragging him toward him where he smashed his head against the ground knocking him unconscious. This was followed by the hero making blood knuckles where he began hammering down on the villains in front of his sight beating them till they lost consciousness. The hero then noticed one of the villains sneaking up on him and made a blood hammer hitting him in the head as he said, you need to do better than that if you hope to catch me off guard. The heroes then noticed the main villain laughing as he said, you're both so cool. You're both awesome. Vlad King has so much stamina and strength while Eraserhead has speed and stealth. This is really amazing. He then giggled a little saying, dot 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 but you're still both going to die. Eraserhead then made his toward the main villain who was making a countdown. The hero managed to weave through the horde of villains protecting him, and finally made it to him as the villain said, your quirk is cool, Eraserhead. You use those goggles to confuse your opponents to where you're looking, but to tell when it's activated. The hero elbowed him into the stomach as his hair went down, dot 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 all you need to do is look at your hair. The hero then felt his elbow slowly decay as he freed himself from the man's grip as the villain informed him, by the way, I'm not the final boss. The racer had felt a shadow loom over him as the villain said, Namu is. The beast then lifted its arm and smashed the erasure hero against the ground. 
Vlad saw this. The hero yelled, get away from him. The man then threw a villain he was holding to the ground and ran toward Namu making a hammer. The hero tried to hit the beast, but it caught the hammer effortlessly before hitting the hero straight in the chest knocking the wind out of him. The Namu then proceeded to grab Eraser's arm and tried to bend it. Everything then stopped a loud boom was heard from the entrance. Namu looked up, but a ray of energy suddenly blasted away from Aizawa. The down hero looked up, problem child, you came. The boy gently grabbed his teacher, calm down, sensei. The others are on their way, and I made copies of myself to go and help the others. Right now, I need you to get out of here, so I can take Namu out. Izuku then gave him to Vlad who asked, how did you even know that there is trouble here? Izuku began to explain, well, I was talking to the principal. A couple of minutes earlier, Izuku was sitting as the Nezu said, Midoriya, I made you my private student. However, I need to understand your powers more so I can see where I can help you, so if you mind, can you or your mentor explain to me what exactly is your power or a little bit about its origin? Discord then appeared on the boy's shoulder. Izuku proceeded to grab him and stretch till he was the full size as the being said, Man, I miss being in my full size again. Izuku shook his head, Well, you see Nezu-sensei, my powers are unique since they are a basic element of the universe. Chaos existed way before anything else. For example, chaos is what originally caused the Big Bang which birthed our universe. Nezu nodded his head as he brought out a small notepad from his desk and began scribbling on it, Carry on, it's intriguing. Discord then added, You see where I came from? The inhabitants learned how to. Well let's just say tame the elements each having their own mastery over something. They are in essence are similar to your quirks, though I won't say that they are the same thing. While yours are powered, theirs are more like a skill that they exceed in. Are you just like them? Or are you different? Nezu asked making both Izuku and All Might feel extremely uncomfortable. I'm different. I was from chaos in my world. Discord then opened his hands, I am the personification of chaos, or I was till I try to possess Broccoli Boy over here. Izuku frowned over the nickname summoning a mirror and looking at his hair which he had to admit in hindsight that it did look like broccoli. What drove you to possess him? Nezu asked him. The chaos being shrugged, like I said previously, I wanted to avoid imprisonment. There was the power of harmony in my world that could seal me away in a statue, and believe me, it is not comfortable. I was freed and then after some things, I was about to be imprisoned. I chose this world because it lacked the concept of friendship, a place where only strong rules. I tried to possess the strongest being, but given that two powers can't mix well inside any given body in this world, I found him and well you see what happened. Nezu meanwhile was cackling like a mad scientist. Suddenly, Izuku's shadow phased into the room as it merged with Izuku telling what was happening inside the USJ and the boy yelled, the USJ is under attack. Nezu stood up with all might buffing up as Izuku said, I'm going. He then disappeared from their sight as Nezu said, alert the entire school to be on complete lockdown till the situation is resolved. The hero then asked, what about young Midoriya? Nezu gave him a look that said that the boy is going to be fine given that he has the entire universe at his fingertips. Back to the current time, Vlad King nodded his head. Izuku then said, take Aizawa sensei from here. Things are about to get seriously messy. Vlad sputtered, you can't expect me to leave facing off against that monster. Izuku looked at him as he said, I can literally summon a thermos nuclear bomb here. I think you should be afraid for the monster, not me. Vlad then looked and saw Namu push to the ground a giant version of Izuku's arm. The boy himself had his entire arm through a portal. The hero nodded and then went off. The boy cracked his neck as he said, let's dance, beastie. In the flood region, all of the present saw something crash into the water beside them. They looked and saw Izuku there with a smile on his face. The boy then said, quickly, I need to all get out of here so I can deal with the villains. Monoma then said, of course, one of students will try to steal our hard-earned effort of facing the villains. Hell, he's even trying to take the effort of his own friends. Everyone gave Monoma a dry look as Izuku simply shook his head before he snapped his fingers lifting everyone into the air. The boy's hand began to emit electricity as Kaminari said, hey, that's my. Izuku then yelled, 10 billion volt attack. Kaminari's mouth dropped open, thing. Izuku then lowered them into the water as he pointed to the down villains, the bad guys are currently down, and I need you all to go to the entrance. Whatever you see, you are not to interfere because I'm currently facing something that requires me to set loose. Everyone looked at him confused, I'm just a clone. Get with the program people. He then disappeared as Kodai said, well, you heard him. Let's get moving. In the fire zone, Shota smiled when he saw Izuku, Midoriya, thank goodness that you're here. Are the heroes here yet? Izuku shook his head saying, no, I beat them here. Don't worry. He looked at Ibarra who was sweating heavily, bad place to her adding to that a fever that she must have developed some time ago. He then touched her forehead making her sleep and cured her. He looked at the fire and began to suck it in. He then formed fire arrows with his bow. He began to fire them and hit the villains knocking them out. He looked at Shota, take everyone to the entrance. And don't come near the plaza. I'm just a clone and the original is battling a very strong monster. When Izuku's clone reached the landslide zone, everyone was packing up and was about to finish the villains. He then quickly took the rest of the villains out. Sorry for taking your fun, guys. But I need you all to go to the entrance and don't come near the plaza. There's an all-might monster there, and I don't need distractions where I'm fighting it. 
He saw Bakugo was about to complain, so he pinched him on his shoulder knocking him out. He looked at the others and asked with a sweetly innocent smile saying, Do I have any more complaints? Everyone shook their heads as Izuku disappeared with Kirishima carrying Bakugo to the entrance. In the earthquake zone, Izuku appeared and whistled, Wow, I have to give for you, Todoroki, you cleared the area entirely. The dual-haired boy looked at him and nodded, Midoriya, I see that you're here. Did the heroes come with you too? Izuku shook his head, I came here before them. Izuku was then tackled to the ground by Kendo. The boy chuckled, Kendo, you're like my sister, but people will get the wrong idea. He then became intangible freeing himself from her grasp. When he formed, he said, Look, I know you're angry, so how about you cool down? A portal opened and the girl was now dumped in snow. Izuku shook his head as the girl was too easy as she said, I will get my revenge for this. Mark my words, Midoriya. The boy chuckled as he tried Kendo back to normal much to the girl's relief. The boy said, I need everyone to go to the entrance and do not go to the plaza. Under any costs. I'm fighting some monster right now and I need full concentration. He then disappeared as Shoto sighed, Well, you heard him. Let's move to the entrance. Even though the boy wanted to see this all-might killer, he knew that going there and putting his classmate's life at risk was a stupid idea. In the mountain zone, the villain holding a waist yelled, What the heck was that sound? His arm was suddenly yanked back by something black. The man in a moment of panic let go of a waist who ran away. The man turned around and saw a shadowy monster that towered over him. The monster replied to his earlier question, Your worst nightmare. The shadow being lifted its arm and smashed the villain into the ground as it said to the others, Go to the entrance, and don't come near the plaza. It then disappeared. Pony then said, I guess Izu is here and is currently fighting the villains. He began to walk forward as she said, Well, you heard what he said. Let's get moving already. The others quickly ran after her as they wondered why Izuku didn't want them to go to the plaza. In the plaza, Shigaraki was furious. First, Kurajiri lets one of the students escape and possibly brings reinforcements. And now the Namu that was made to kill All Might was struggling against some brat with a hack of a quirk. He looked at the boy who was moving his neck around to avoid Namu's hits. The madman yelled, Namu, quit playing with him, and end the brat already. The beast then launched itself at Izuku who opened a portal had the Namu go through it and ended up crashing inside the fountain. Wow, this thing sure makes for a good punching bag. Izuku commented happily as he felt his doubles return to him, and his energy increased as he said, well, let's take out the kid's gloves. He quickly teleported to in front of Namu punching six times in the chest, but the beast barely blinked and only skidded for a few meters. Good try, kid. Namu has shock absorption, Tamira said with pride. Izuku nodded his head, all right, then how about this? Izuku sprouted wings from his back. His skin turned rocky and hard. His fingers turned into claws as he bellowed, demon mode. The boy was quick to attack the Namu and began to slice it up causing several wounds. Izuku's eyes widened when the monster healed itself and punched him in the gut. The boy frowned as he healed himself, regeneration too. That's odd. I can also add to the list super strength and speed given from its earlier feats. The boy then grabbed him and began to freeze him to the ground. The Namu was now nothing but a statue. The boy breathed heavily as he felt he was reaching his limit of chaos energy before he went crazy drunk with power. A cracking sound caught his attention as Namu freed itself from the ice. It then began to regenerate as Izuku said, I stand corrected, super regeneration. The boy then turned into a T-Rex much to the hidden excitement of someone who saw and lunged at the Namu who grabbed his jaws and threw him over its shoulders. Tamira laughed, do you give? The man was then struck by lightning. This caused him to yell angrily and demand that Namu and Izuku for being a cheat. The two fighters continued their dance of death with Izuku being brought closer and closer to his limit, till an idea hit him. How will the Namu be able to regenerate if there's nothing to regenerate from? It was a risky plan, but worth the shot. The boy then opened a portal touching Namu's back. The boy then backed away from the beast as he snapped his fingers. The beast was then consumed in hellfire as it shrieked with its voice echoing everywhere. Finally, when the fire ended, Namu was nowhere to be seen. In its place was just a pile of ashes. Tamira was about to complain, but then he noticed the delirious expression on Izuku's face as he began to laugh crazily. The boy looked at him and in a moment, he punched him so hard that he destroyed the father's hand on his face. Hirajiri acted quickly teleporting away with Tamira before the hero boy can do more damage. Back with Izuku, the boy has lost control even though his mentor warned him about it. He was right now in a state of weakness not able to recognize anything or anybody. He then began to leash out against everything around him. Back at the entrance, the heroes have arrived with All Might leading them. The hero looked down and saw Izuku destroying everything in his path while laughing crazily, what is young Midoriya doing down there? Momo replied, well, he was fighting that Namu thing, and when he was able to defeat it, he went insane. I think he might have hit his limit and kept pushing it, and now he's gone crazy. The hero clenched his fist because he had to take Izuku down to help him. He yelled, everyone, stay back. Young Midoriya's quirk is really strong, and it may take a while till I can beat him or knock him out. He was about to go, but Pony beat him to the boy. What happened next stunned him as the boy turned into a serpent and coiled around her neck making the girl blush. The hero figured that even though he was out of his mind, his instincts must have been still acting, and told him that Pony was an ally. 
He then took his students back to school as the heroes we were loading the villains away. Inside a dingy old bar, Tamira flopped onto the ground as he said, Damn it, and that damn cheat. Took out Namu before all might can even come. A voice echoed throughout the bar, I take the mission was a failure to Mira. The boy frowned as he crossed his arms, the mission was a success till that boy showed up and cleared everything out. Heck, I didn't even know what his quirk is. He was doing multiple things at once. The boy carried on complaining as the owner of the voice said in a quiet tone, Hmm, interesting. Aftermath. In the school, the infirmary was now busy with recovery girl trying to tie Izuku to the gurney as he struggled to free himself still in a state of overload from his actions at the USJ with chaotic rays of energy being thrown left and right one of them hit Kendo by accident making her naturally red hair become that of a clown much to the girl's ire and anger. Recovery girl yelled, fire in the hall. At that moment, Izuku launched his rays which bounced off a bunch of mirrors hitting Mina and turning him into an old man which made him creepier than usual as he began to shout curses at Izuku for doing this to him. The healing heroine groaned as she hit Izuku with her cane yelling, You idiot child, why did you have to overdo it? Chaos energy isn't my specialty, but even I know that it's harmful to one's mind if he overdoes it. He then looked at Discord who was floating without a care in the world, and you, you're his mentor. Why didn't you stop him from doing something so stupid like overloading his entire body with chaos magic? Discord looked offended as he said, Don't blame me. He wouldn't listen. You know how he gets when he goes into his hero mode. The woman sighed knowing that he was right on all accounts, but now they needed him to calm down so she can treat him. Pony then walked in. She was beyond furious as her ivory horns were now made out of chocolate. She looked at her boyfriend who she discarded. She walked to his side with a beautiful smile. He looked at her and cooed instinctively. The girl grabbed his head and pulled it nearer to her as she smashed his head against the counter knowing him, good riddance. The boy now had a couple of discords circling his head as he flopped down knocked out cold. Recovery girl blinked a little wondering if she just had to do that as she went to her work and began hooking him up to various machines and instruments including one for his head given that his nervous system was the one that had the most damage out of all his body. The woman began to do tests to check his health. She finally finished as she said, I'm sorry, but I'm worried that he might not be able to wake up from this. The state of damage that his mind suffered is too much. He might be hooked up to machines for the rest of his life given how hard it is to give him a mercy kill. She finished as she looked at both Discord and Pony. Both Discord and Pony laughed at her as they kneeled to the ground making her yell, take the situation more seriously. The boy isn't going to make it. She was silenced as they laughed even harder with rivers of tears flowing from their eyes. Discord finally stopped and said, listen, lady, I've been the lord of chaos for god knows how much. This is normal. He'll only need a good night's sleep and a stern talking to from yours truly, and he'll be like a million bucks first thing tomorrow. Pony nodded adding, this isn't the first time something like this happened. Two weeks before the entrance exam, the same thing happened and it only expanded his ability to control more chaos. The healing heroine slapped her forehead at both of their attitudes before kicking them out of the infirmary and called his mother who reacted the same way the other two did baffling the woman. The woman looked at him and went to give the school staff the news which made some like Aizawa angry that he failed at protecting his student. All Might pretended to be worried having seen a breakdown like this before and how Izuku jumped back up the next day as if nothing happened. Back in Izuku's mind, he opened his eyes to see that he is in a fancy looking room as he sighed, Oh dear, I must have overdone it this time too. The boy began to laugh uproariously as someone slapped him upside the head causing him to fall to the ground with a thud, Oh, you're here. That's a little bit early than usual. Discord looked at him with a very unamused look as he said, What did we talk about last time you pulled shit like this? The boy chuckled awkwardly remembering the previous lecture. Izuku innocently smiled, I don't recall. Can you please help me remember WH? He was then hit by a powerful pump of water as he was soaked from head to toe causing him to jump up and yell in anger that this wasn't funny anymore, and it never was, to begin with. Discord crossed his arms as he said, Well, I won't do that if you listen to what I have to say for once. Listen, I get it that you're planning to become a hero and your motto is plus ultra, but isn't good if it lands you in the hospital every time you use it. The boy crossed his arms as he grumbled a little under his saying that they are being unfair and that they should blame the huge All Might killer that forced him to go all out earning another slap to which the boy finally said, I get it. Stop slapping me upside the head, will ya? The being of chaos nodded his head before going to his bed and sleeping it and forced Izuku to sleep on the coach for being an idiot to which the boy disagreed, but didn't voice his complaints not wanting to be hit again. The next morning, recovery girl entered her office to check on Izuku only to see that his bed was empty. The woman began to panic wondering if someone has kidnapped him. The door of the bathroom opened as Izuku exited it causing the woman to yell, How are you awake? The boy shrugged as he said, I only needed a good night's rest. I sure that they told you that. The woman sat down and popped a couple of headache pills as he the door was swung open by Pony who hugged Izuku and cried, Izuku, I thought that I lost you forever. I'm so glad that you're okay. The girl began to check him over for injuries. When she was satisfied, she smiled, grabbed his neck, and began to shake him furiously, you big moron. How many times do I need to say it? Don't overdo it. But no god forbid you to listen to me for once. And another thing. The girl continued to shake the boy who couldn't reply till she finally stopped. 
The girl let him go and he fell to the ground with a thud. Pony looked at him as the boy was laying on the ground with many discords flying around his head. She then smacked him upside the head causing his head to shake as the sounds of metal pins were being heard from his head. Finally, the shaking stopped as the boy's pupils, which going in circles in his eyes, began to stop as he focused again. The boy looked at his girlfriend and pouted, what was that about? You know that really hurt. My head is still shaking from the pain. The boy looked away in fake anger as the girl stayed beside him, and began to stroke his hair softly making him purr before she kneed him the stomach. The girl then stood up and said, get over it, you big baby. Half of our classmates have been transformed into God knows what. Plus, you know that tough love is still love. She then kissed him causing the boy to blush different shades of red. Discord then popped on his shoulder and said, I really think that you should undo the changes that you caused to your friends, especially her, he said pointing to Pony's chocolate horns, though I have to admit that they are quite tasty. He then proceeded to rip out a horn and eat it with Izuku doing the same. The girl proceeded to punch them on the head saying, hey, my horns aren't food, you know. Both of them grumbled as Izuku snapped his fingers and turned everything back to normal with Pony hugging him and saying in a very sweet voice, Thanks babe, you're the best. The boy looked at her and couldn't help but smile at her. Even if she hits him, she's still cute while doing it. The boy stood up and began to stretch his legs as he walked to the side and noticed a shell-shocked recovery girl, so he asked, What's up with her? Pony shrugged and said, I bet that she's just shocked that you're up and running given that yesterday you seemed one step away from dying and having a permanent coma. Izuku just chuckled as he said, Didn't you guys tell her that this isn't the first time something like that happened and I always jump back good as new? Discord shrugged saying, We tried to tell her, but she wouldn't listen. She was stubborn. The trio walked out of the infirmary leaving the old woman alone. She fell from her chair and hit the ground as she said, I think I need a raise. She remembered Aizawa grumbling about problem children and said, Now, I understand why he's always so grumpy. Problem children are really annoying. The woman then walked to Nezu's office to demand a raise as she saw a dejected Aizawa walking away. He looked at her and said, Raise because of problem child. The woman nodded as the man said, Look, I won't stop you, but know that Nezu won't give it to you unless you have something that will actually force him to do it. The old lady smiled and entered the room. A shriek of terror could be heard before the woman exited the room with a paycheck making the erasure hero wonder what she threatened Nezu with to force him to give her a raise. Back with Izuku and Pony, they walked to the one of dorms. The boy had his girlfriend clinging to him as he asked, Is this really necessary? It's not like I'll run into villains on school grounds. The boy tried to remove only for her to cling to his arms even harder. Of course, it is, Pony replied with a very expression. Every time I as so much as blink or look away from you, you somehow manage to put yourself in a life-threatening situation. If I didn't know any better, I'd say you do this shit on purpose, so no I won't let go. She then smiled brightly, and also this could be considered as a type of bonding so be happy you big log. The boy sighed before petting his girlfriend on the head making her neigh in happiness before he remembered something. Now, that I think about it, what happened after I lost control of my powers? Izuku asked in curiosity making Pony blush as she remembered how he wrapped himself in his serpent form around her body and neck. She shook her head furiously to calm herself down. The girl quickly replied, nothing that you need to worry about. The boy was weirded out by this as he asked, are you s? Yes, I am. The girl cut him off making him feel worried. Discord then appeared out of nowhere and said, I think you should listen to her. Nothing worth mentioning happened. The boy at this point shrugged his shoulders as they continued the walk to the dorms as he said, but you have to admit that I was awesome in the USJ. Pony looked at him and replied happily, yes, you were really fucking awesome. You managed to beat the villains down before they even knew it. And you duplicated yourself into multiple versions. That was extra cool. I hope that I can manage to stand out just like you someday. The boy stopped a little and his girlfriend turned and looked at him, Pony, you don't need to stand out. You're already awesome as you are. The girl smiled a little as she said, that was really nice, Izu. Cheesy, but was nice. Discord on the other hand was crying rivers from his eyes as he said, that was the sappiest piece of crap that I ever saw in my entire existence. And yet for some reason, I can't help myself from crying. Pony replied, that's because Izuku is chopping onions over your head. The ex-lord of chaos looked up and saw a bunch of onions being cut and the smell making his eyes watery, and at this moment, he couldn't feel prouder that the mentee has finally outplayed the mentor. Pony began to chuckle with Izuku as the girl said, we should hurry to our classmates, or else we'll worry them. They've been waiting for all day long and were worried sick that you might die. The boy began to pick up the pace as Pony said, but be warned Itsuka might be still angry that you gave her a clown makeover so just in case go and hide somewhere when you see her. The boy faked his hurt saying, but it couldn't be helped, I was technically unaware of what I was doing, she can't blame me. Pony gave him a very unimpressed look, do you even believe what you're saying? The boy went to reply, but couldn't, meh, you're right. Aware or not, messing with her is fun plus she's an awesome fuel for chaos. The woman can't take a hit and keep laying down. She always comes back and wants revenge for the prank I pulled on her. The boy laughed loudly. The girl only sighed as she shook her head with amusement, I thought so. Five minutes later, they were both at the door of one a dorm. The boy looked at the girl and nodded. The girl knocked on the door. 
They waited for a moment before a depressed Achako opened the door and said, Hi, Pony. How can? The moment she saw Izuku, she pounced on him with a happy expression. The girl bawled her eyes out, Deku, thank God. You're all right. I really thought that we lost you for a moment back there. Everyone heard the commotion and came to the dorm's door wondering what was happening. Momo was the first as she yelled, You're Raka, what's with the screaming? When the girl saw Midoriya, she also began to cry as she too hugged the boy making him and his girlfriend on the side fume with anger as she mentally said, Happy thoughts. Happy thoughts. Fucking happy thoughts. The girl finally reached her limit as she pushed them both away saying, I think we should allow him to enter the dorms to relax a bit. Momo nodded her head as she grabbed both Izuku's and Pony's hands dragging them inside saying, Guys, Midoriya's back and he's okay. The common room was then flooded by students who were worried sick for their friends or who were there out of respect such as Todoroki. Ida was the first one to talk to him, Midoriya, my good friend. Nothing can express how much I am relieved to see you in such a good condition. The boy hugged him and patted his back awkwardly since he wasn't one for physical affection. Izuku smiled and chuckled, well, I can tell you that this wasn't my first time, and hopefully it would be the last time that something like this happens ever again. Izuku replied with a huge smile on his face as he wondered in his mind how many times will this happen again. He shrugged as he thought that only time and experience will tell. Discord then began to boo him in his head reminding him that there shouldn't be a next time, but he was mostly ignored by the boy. Suyu came along and slapped him with her tongue, that's for making us feel worried. The boy rubbed his cheek wondering why girls had some kind of fetish when it came to hitting him. She then hugged him saying, this was a thank you for saving us all. She walked for a bit before slapping him again and adding, and that's for turning into a frog when you were inside your chaos-induced state. The boy blushed as he said, sorry that you had to wait for the morning to be turned back. Everyone in the room suddenly blushed remembering how Tsui was turned back into herself. Takoyami just chose to forget everything given how embarrassing it was. Well on the bright side, his first kiss was for a heroic cause. Suddenly the doors of the dorms were blown open by the students of 1B who ran and began to thank Izuku for saving their lives or just being there in general. When all the thanks and happiness were over, Kendo walked to Izuku with a vein throbbing on her forehead. You made my hair into clown hair. Do you know that I have a new nickname going around UA? A now known as Kendo the Clown. The girl fumed as strangled the boy. Izuku tapped his hand on the ground and the girl relented for a moment. She looked at him and said, I'll give you a chance to explain yourself. The boy thanked her for the generous offer. Izuku then said, you can't blame me. I wasn't even in control of myself yesterday. Have some mercy in your heart. The boy looked at her with pure innocent eyes as she gave him a deadpan look that said I don't buy it for one second. But she faltered for a moment which he used to run away from, and she began to give chase. The boy ran around the room as Sitsuna said, well look at that, Pony was right after all. Nothing seems to phase the strongest member of the green team. Everyone looked at her and said, green team. The girl nodded her head happily, yeah, it's a team made up of all the greenies in both classes. We have meetings, parties, going to the parks, visiting the museum. She coughed in her fist as she said the last part silently, dot 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 and a lot of pagan worshipping for the greenie god. Still need a human sacrifice, but I think Izuku will work just fine given that he can just regenerate. What the girl didn't know was that Kayoka heard what she said and was planning on staying away from her as much as possible. In the meantime, Izuku was still running away from Kendo who said, Come on, stop running and handle your punishment like a man, you little coward. The boy quickly walked upside the wall and began to crawl to the ceiling as he looked down at Kendo and said, I guess I can if you come up here and fight me like a spider. The girl smirked, No, I guess I could arrange that. She then put two of her fingers in her mouth and began to whistle. From the outside, voices of shuffling were heard as two dog-sized spiders were seen moving into 1A's dorms causing a lot of heart attacks along the way. Kendo looked at her two spiders. Could you two be sweet and nice and bring me that idiot from up there? She asked patting their heads to which to make sounds of appreciation before going to grab Izuku who screamed in fear. The boy ran around and looked at the two spiders chasing him. You traitors, remember I'm technically your father. I brought to this world and I can much as well take you from it. Kendo gasped, I will not allow you to harm my babies in any form or shape got it. Izuku finally tripped causing one of the huge spiders to catch him and drag him down to Kendo to which he said, peace. And he extended his hand. The girl looked at him skeptically as she said, fine. She grabbed his hand and began to shake it till she felt it going loose she looked and saw Izuku running with the hand having a fuse at the hand as it reached its hand causing her to say, that son of. An explosion occurred and everyone looked at Kendo who was now sporting clown makeup on her face with a red clown nose and finally clown rainbow hair. The girl looked at everyone who was struggling not to laugh so they won't be on the receiving end of her wrath. The girl took out a mirror and saw her face which caused a couple of veins to pop on her forehead and yell at her pet spiders, Mike, Spike, sick him. The two spiders ran after him around the dorms in a comedic chase before Pony having enough of this chase tripped him. The boy yelled betrayal as the two spiders dragged toward Kendo who gave him a harsh beat down to which he only laughed as he made her punches feel like a punch of feathers. 
By the end of it, Kendo let Izuku go with a firm warning that if he retried any more shit with her, there will be harsh consequences which the bot disregarded saying that she will not do anything to him since she's a big sister and big sisters are supposed to protect and adore their brothers. The girl grumbled and said that she will give him a timeout. They both then sat down and everyone looked at them as Kamakiri said, Is your comedy program over, or do we have to wait some more? He crossed his arms as he added, Not that I mind. This shit going on between you two is comedy gold. He began to laugh and suddenly felt a very threatening aura. He looked and saw Kendo smiling sweetly, but the smile was pure evil. Wanama trying to defuse the situation before their class rep blew up a few said, How about we play a game or something? Show these class one a goons who is the boss. Everyone nodded as Kendo calmed down and asked, So what do you guys want to play? I'm down for anything. I'm a master at all types of games. Tetsu then whispered, She's really a very sore loser who destroys the game once she begins to lose. The girl gasped and said that those were false accusations as Setsuna pulled a video of her destroying the chess board last week with Shishida after he almost defeated her making her blush. Izuku snapped his fingers as he made a board appear from nowhere and said, How about we play Dungeons and Dragons? Everyone agreed, but Kendo began to inspect the board closely. She then looked up and gave a thumbs up as she said, It's all clear. It's clean. There's nothing to be worried about here. Everyone sighed in relief as they all began to lay the game, but as time went on, the game began to get boring given that this wasn't interesting at all and they weren't used to playing a board game. Kamakiri finally stood up and yelled, This shit is boring. Isn't there anything of a higher stake? At that, he felt a chill go down his spine as he looked at Izuku with discord wrapped around his neck both chuckling. The chaos boy then said, Higher stakes you say. I suppose I can arrange that. The man his looking boy began to sweat as he said, No, it's cool man. I don't need higher stakes. The boy was hoping to avoid being turned into a rat like last night when he was struck by a stray chaos beam. Izuku smiled, don't worry. It's going to be fun for everyone. I'll just raise the stakes of the game a little bit. Everyone began to shift nervously till Kendo stood up and walked to the door and tried to open it. When the door didn't budge, the girl frowned and looked at the boy. Come on, baby number 21. The girl said in a calm voice, I said I wasn't interested in anything you have to offer us. The boy snapped his fingers as Kendo sighed and opened the door only to be met by a brick wall. She looked at Izuku who grabbed Pony and summoned an umbrella. The boy raised his foot and brought it down on the ground. Suddenly, the ground was gone as everyone was falling inside a dark abyss with Kamakiri yelling, I regret my life choices, and fuck you Midoriya. Everyone else was just sighing as they fell into the unknown. Izuku meanwhile was floating gently using the umbrella as Pony was hanging on him as he fed her grapes from his hair. The girl looked at him already used to his antics and said, That's a long way down there. She can still hear her classmates' screams of horror even when they began to become fainter. The boy shrugged as he said, I suppose so. He rubbed his head against Pony who blushed. Pony looked at him and asked, Do you know that Itsuka will really make you pay for this? The boy shrugged as he saw the price he had to pay for this was worth it. Moments later, everyone from both classes wakes up as they survey their surroundings. A harsh punch could be heard with a whine of pain. Everyone looked to see an orc-like creature punching a mantis-looking warrior. They all knew who the mantis was, it was Kamakiri. Ryaiko then said in a surprisingly hollow voice, Stop hurting our friend please. The orc looked familiar to her, but she couldn't just point where she saw it. The orc looked at her, and said in a feminine, No, I'm going to beat the hell out of him for putting him in this situation. The orc then stopped and asked, And why do you look all a ghost Ryaiko? The ghost girl was shocked, but asked, Itsuka, is that you? The girl nodded her head, but Ryaiko then said, Best that you don't use a mirror because you're going to flip your lead. Kendo wondered why looked into the water of the river beside them and saw that now she had two tusks going out of her mouth. Her entire body was muscular and she looked like an orc. She felt mad but then noticed everyone had weird features. Hida was a knight, Achako was a magician of some sort, Todoroki was a prince, Momo was a princess, Shishida was a werewolf, Ryaiko was a ghost, and Setsuna was a cavewoman. She looked and saw up in the sky Izuku sitting on a cloud watching them all as she asked, What are doing, Midoriya? Put us back. The boy waved his hand and says, Hello there, adventurers. Everyone looked at him as Ibarra as an angel said, Midoriya, can you please turn us back? She then grabbed her soft wings and put her face into them. Seeing how soft they were, she said, I guess I can stay an angel for a little bit longer. She then fell asleep. Izuku coughed as he said, As I was saying, I tonight have summoned you all to go on a quest of utmost importance. It is to save the fair princess pony from the clutches of the evil dragon king. Everyone sighed as he added, But fair not, I will accompany his commentary. He then clapped his hands and said, Now, the faster you act the sooner you get out. Everyone sighed, but there was some compensation as they enjoyed the treat of seeing both Monoma and Minded as trolls. They would always get hurt the most. It took 10 years to finally complete the quest which was 10 hours in human time. Everyone was of course pissed off, but Izuku was just laughing as they chased him around the dorms. They were cut off by teachers coming and telling them to each go to his room since there was an inspection coming up. They were also told that they have the rest of the week off to come to terms with what happened at the USJ which made them happy. The next week came by quickly as everyone was getting ready for their classes. Izuku woke up with a smile on his face seeing that nothing can ruin his mode. 
he walked down the dorms with a happy smile on his face. He entered the kitchen and snapped his fingers as he hummed a tone with food preparing itself for everyone in the class. The boy then tapped his chin as he said, something doesn't feel right. He then snapped his fingers once more as he put a live rooster in Kendo's bedroom and waited till he heard, I'm gonna gut, you little bastard. Momo walked into the kitchen as Izuku handed her ten sandwiches. The girl thanked him as she inspected her food to make sure that there are no tricks in it. The last he handed Itsuka something, it had a miniature stink bomb that went off in her mouth. Let's just say, the poor girl had to use ten tubes of toothpaste to get the smell away. The boy chuckled as he said, Calm down, I only prank Kendo because she makes way more fun with her reactions and her puny attempts for getting back at me. It's like watching a baby trying to fight the large Doberman dog you have without any type of training. Meanwhile, Momo had one thought, how did he know that I have a Doberman dog back at home? She then heard in her mind something that said, I didn't but thanks for the info. I bring him a treat next time I go to the mall, I always like dogs more than cats. Somewhere, a grumpy man felt a universal crime being committed against cats. The girl said, thanks Midoriya, but you should really tone it down with Kendo. The boy waved his hand as he said, nah, Kendo and I are cool. She thanked the other since it helps her senses become strong and now she can smell trouble in her sleep. The girl nodded her head as Izuku began to head out of the dorm, but when he exited, a splash of cold water could be heard. Momo looked out and saw Izuku trenched from head to toe with cold icy water as a small card fell that said, From your best friend, Kendo. I hope you liked it, baby number 21. The boy looked up and saw two spiders crawling away as he said, This means war. He then went inside to clean himself up as Momo finally began to laugh at what happened. Inside a dingy old lab, a man was sitting around till a voice came out of nowhere and said, Doctor, I hope you found what I asked you for. The man was startled as he fell from his chair to the ground and looked at the screen of a nearby computer and bowed. Master, the doctor said in utmost respect, I looked at everyone from the files of the boy, but it's like he's invisible. If you could only give me a name, I could do it much faster on my computer in the hospital. The man on the other side of the screen hummed a little as he looked at the names of the student remembering the description that he asked Tamira to give of the student who managed to take out Namu. The man-child back then said that the boy was green-haired with green eyes. He looked through the files till he landed on someone who matched the description. His was name was Izuku Midoriya. The man then said, I think his name was Izuku Midori. Does it ring any bells, doctor? The doctor hummed a bit as he went and began to work on his devices. The man finally stopped, you said that his name was Izuku Midoriya, right? The man affirmed, yes, that's what the student file name told me. Do you by any chance know him, doctor? The man asked his most loyal servant. The doctor replied, yes, he was a patient of mine that I diagnosed his quirk, but it appears that I was wrong. I thought that he was quirkless, but it seems he proved me wrong. I think I must begin to update my methods. The toe joint test appears not to be as good as the old times. On the other side of the screen, the man sighed as he had always told his servant that this method was a waste of time and effort, but he never listened seeing it as the most effective way to determine whether someone has a quirk or not. Well, better late than never I suppose. The doctor then asked, this run has a quirk, and I suppose that it's a strong one if you're interested in it, master. The man began to search through the updated registers of the quirk foundation but quickly hit a brick wall as the boy's quirk was considered highly confidential so no one could access it except the highest level of authority. The man frowned and asked him, could you manage to find a way to open the files, good doctor. The mad genius smiled as he said, of course, I can't do all of this if I didn't have some hacking expertise in the first place. The man began to work quickly as the other screen went off, young Midoriya, what kind of secrets do you have that master has given you his attention? What is your quirk to begin with? I'll make sure to turn you into an amazing Namu. The man began to work quickly to discover the secrets of the kid that he disregarded years ago. The man then looked around him as he saw various tubes filled with monster-like creatures similar to the one that was present in the USJ. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through what if Deku became Vessel for Discord. I hope you found it as intriguing and thought-provoking as we did. A big shout-out to Demon Heart 12 for crafting such a compelling story. Don't forget to check out their profile on fanfiction.net for more amazing works, the link is in the description below. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to Deku Fanfic for more fascinating explorations into the world of fanfiction and fantasy. Your support helps us create more content like this, and we're always excited to hear your thoughts and suggestions in the comments section. See you guys in the next video.